Yo, 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 what it do, what it do? Hey, we know you just saw that fresh new intro. Wasn't that shit sick? Well, we couldn't agree more, guys. Right, we just collaborated with our boy Omar at Sun City Vibes to help create an intro that would take our podcast to the next level. Do you need help with your video editing and content creation to help elevate your business to the next level? Well, Sun City Vibes has you covered without a doubt. Yeah, that's right, guys. Whether it's a logo reveal, a music video, drone footage, or even t-shirt printing, guys, hit up Sun City Vibes for quality work and affordable price. Shit, Omar even made us a sick ass hat. Look at this. It's a fresh Fresh. ass hat. Fresh. Shit's fresh. Fresh. So yeah, guys, go help support those that support us and hit up our boy Omar and tell him Chris and Misa sent you from the podcast and help support a local El Paso business today. Let's go. Three, two, one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. As always, guys, co-host of the podcast, Mr. Misael is here with us. Say what's up to the podcast. Yo, yo, yo. What it do, what it do, what it do. And the producer chair, our boy Joe, is back. Say what's up to the podcast, Joe. What is up, everybody? For episode 165, guys, we have a very, very, very special guest. He's a member of the El Salvadorian men's national soccer team and a member of your El Paso locomotive. His name is Eric Calvillo. Say what's up to the podcast, man. Yeah, what's up? What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Hey, welcome, dude. Welcome, man. Thanks for giving us your time, dude. Of course. Thank you guys for inviting me. Oh, yeah, brother. Thank you for being here today. We really do appreciate it. Uh, We we know you're a busy guy. You're training. You got this uh, USL season coming up. So thank you for being here. And thank you for answering my fucking IG DM. That was really cool. Isn't that creepy, dude? Like you get a message from like oh some God. guy, like his face on it's there. All ugly. You're like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> Not at all. To be honest with you, like the most like messages I get are from are from men. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like kids. Fans. I yeah, guess Chris was the cutest exactly. one he got, so he answered back. I yeah, because you'll be surprised, man. I, you know, I have my woman back home, and she's like. Oh, who's texting you or who's on your DMs? I'm like, it's, it's all Chris, guys. man. It's yeah, Chris. It's all guys, he just man. wants a podcast, I swear. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Well, thank you for being here, Misa. Give him a round yeah. of applause for joining us today. Sure. Mr. Eric, we really, really appreciate you sliding by the studio. Uh, guys, before we crack off episode number, crack off, before we start off episode number 165, there's a tradition mm-hmm. on this motherfucker. It's called the cracking of the celebratory beer. And it sounds mm-hmm. like... There you go, guys. Thank you all for supporting us. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for following us on Instagram, liking us on Facebook, subscribing to our YouTube channel. We really do appreciate all that. All right, Mr. Eric. So for the people who may not know who you are, you're a midfielder for the locomotives. Been playing soccer a long time now. Uh, For the people who may not know who you are, though, give them like a little brief um, introduction to who you are. Uh, Well, yeah. Again, my name is Eric Calvillo. I am a center midfielder for your locomotives. Uh, I've been playing since I was about the age of four. Uh, you know, I've been all over the world. I've played with, you know, with different, you know, clubs, academy. I've also, you know, had the privilege of representing the U.S. national team at the youth level. But, uh, and then, yeah, I signed my first pro contract when I was about 17, going on 18, and been going into, what, my eighth year now? And, you know, the, the story's still being written, man. So, yeah, can't dude. complain. Hell yeah, hell yeah, dude. 17, 18? God, yeah, yeah, what, was, what were you doing, Chris? <laughs> Nothing, dude. You <laughs> ask me this every time. 17, 18 He was year probably old smoking, whacking it in the room. Smoking a bunch <laughs> of THC yeah. and not doing shit. You know what I mean? But, yeah, <laughs> it's true. But anyways, dude, thank you for fucking being here again, like yeah. we said. Um, so, you're actually, um, you're from California. We were just mm-hmm. talking about this Palmdale, California. Yes, sir, uh, Palmdale. What, what was it like growing up over there, man? Uh, it was chill, man. I mean, to be honest with you, like my childhood probably isn't nothing like, you know, everybody else's or yours. Uh, you know, I grew up in, you know, a small town, Palmdale, you know, uh, a lot of people were, were barely moving there. It was a new area, new town, new city. And and yeah, you know, I grew up there until I was about what I want to say 14. I left and I never went back. You just like back since? Well, I've gone back to visit, yeah, of course, but I'm saying just like to live there. Yeah, yeah, I never went back to living there. Like it's just off season. Off hey. season was the only time I would go back to Palmdale, right. see my friends, uh, you know. But uh, but I moved out there when I was about six or seven. I want to say that's where it all started, and then until four, seven years later, then I left. Oh yeah, yeah. Went back. So, where, so where is like Palmdale? What part of California is that? Uh, it's like north of LA. Okay. Yeah. It's so it's away LA. from the big city. And it shit. is. Yeah. Okay. It's about like an hour and a half to two, depending oh, on traffic. You Damn. Know? Yeah. So it's like a, it's a little like going towards I want to say Vegas. Okay. You know, because uh, it was closer from Palmdale, 
you know, to Vegas than LA to Vegas. Is it like desert then? Yeah. It's so desert? to be honest, it's exactly like El Paso. Okay. Like, oh, shit. It's very similar. So when I came here, I was like, bro, like, like it's yeah. nothing new. Welcome home. Yeah, yeah. I was like, pretty much, you know, like Palm Desert is exactly <laughs> like, like this. What? No trees? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. at home. He's I'm like, like, no just, trees? <laughs> <laughs> just desert. They smoke just them desert all the trees. Sand. Yeah, no. So Palm is nice. It's, a, it's involving just like here. You know, I've like, I've, uh, I've had a friend that is, you know, from here, he lived here like majority of his life. Um, maybe you guys have heard of him. His name is Alejandro Sendejas. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, he fucking plays. Uh, he plays in Mexico, exactly. right? Like, he plays like, yeah, America. Mexicans. Yeah. So he. So when I first met him, it was through the national team. But uh, but yeah, you know, he talked about it being a small town, not much to do. You know, it's still growing type of stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's Palmdale. Now look at look at it. A couple yeah. of years later, like everybody's involved. And new stuff are coming in. And and yeah, you know, people are moving, you know, more to El Paso and like just like Palmdale. Right. Yeah, dude. I mean, El Paso's grown so much. I mean, we have a USL team now. Uh, we got the fucking uh, Chihuahuas back. Mm-hmm. They like uh, they weren't always there. We had minor league baseball before in the city. But, you know, after the Diablos moved out, you know, we didn't really have any more sports besides UTEP, you know. Uh, but yeah, dude, it's cool. And it's 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 I think it's good for you because. Uh, the trend transition to being here is easier because you're kind of used to like being in a place like Palmdale. You know yeah. what I mean? No, of course. But you I, know what El Paso doesn't have that Palmdale does? A fucking rap song by fucking yeah. <laughs> Afro Man. Afro Man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Afro Man. Palmdale. I was, I was, yeah, I was this. I was fucking today years old that I fucking <laughs> realized that uh, Afro Man is from Palmdale. So yeah. shout out to that. Eastside yeah. Palmdale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's, that's what's shout up. Shout out to Afro Man. I know he's listening. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's watching now. Yeah, he's watching. <laughs> so where does your, like, uh, I guess your soccer story start? Like, uh, were you, did you grow up and everyone was playing soccer? Or, like, were you, like, into other sports? Or how did you, like, that really begin? <clears throat> yeah, no, pretty much uh, my family, you know, all soccer. I really grew up just playing soccer. Uh my dad was a goalkeeper, actually, so which is kind of weird about it. You know, he was a goalkeeper, and I became like a midfielder. Right. You're over here scoring goals and shit. And so. When I can, when I can. You know, <laughs> at, at, when I was young, yeah, I was yeah, banging yeah. goals. It was easier. than now it's obviously it's tough. Right. More technical. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Keepers have involved and grew. You yeah. know, back then, keepers were like <laughs> super tiny, so all right. I would have to do is just chip it over them. And I would score so many goals doing that, you know. But, uh, but yeah, I, I grew up, you know, from my family playing. I have uncles that played my cousins that play my siblings not so much my brother is starting to play more soccer now um my sisters never really you know grew into that they, right. they stayed away from it uh but yeah other than that like it, it was just from my dad's side my mom really never played soccer either but she was just that supportive mom that you know did a lot for me soccer mom dude yeah, exactly. are you, are you yeah. the oldest i am yeah the I'm, oldest the child. Old, I'm the oldest out of four yeah. yeah so it's me my two younger sisters and then my baby brother yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. And so like when uh when do you start like because obviously youth soccer in America is kind of like a I don't know, a lot of people talk shit about it, you know, like the you whole You mean like the YMCA fucking Well, like the whole <laughs> idea of like pay to play, like yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Like like clubs like especially like a prestigious like club like obviously to be part of it, you know, you got to have some financial means. Yeah. It's not like in just like almost any other country like uh from in Mexico or the Netherlands or in Belgium where like all you need is just to be able to play and you can fucking play. So how did like how what do you remember about being on these like club teams and like when did you really start to get like some traction or notice like hey, I'm pretty good at this shit, dude? Yeah, so obviously like I started obviously at a very young age and went through the path that I think majority of soccer players go through which is like YMCA or Ace AYSO is what we call it over there. Um, and then I guess at the age of five to six, you know, the, the way people saw me and my father saw me and the talent that I had, he had another vision for me. And that took me to like starting club, which was, you know, I was playing two years up. I wouldn't, I never really played my own age. So at the age of like seven is when I f- joined my first team in Palmdale. When I moved out, it was the AV Sharks. Uh, I was, like I said, seven years old playing with U nines, you know, and I did that for majority of my life of my youth um, until I, I want to say I was about 11 or 12, I would say maybe a little, maybe 10 uh, is when, you know, the, again, like my dad saw a different vision and saw something that could be, could be better for me and my career. And that was getting me out of Palmdale and getting me back to playing in LA teams where all the scouts were going right. to, you know what I mean? Like they're the all be- looking exactly. The best teams were there and they're playing in the best tournaments. They're playing in the, you know, the best academy teams, you know? 
So that's when I ended up signing. Oh, not signing. Sorry, I'm so used to that. But uh, joining Real SoCal, which were who a team that was a very popular club in, in L.A. from Thousand Oaks. And uh, and I went there and, you know, that was the... How old were you when that happened? I was about, like, I want to say, like, about 10 or so. Yeah. Like, I was there for a while, man. I was there. It was my team throughout the whole, like, um, teenage, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. age and stuff. Like, yeah, man. So I joined them and I was there for, like, a good couple of years. How was that? Like, as a 10-year-old, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like playing and, and doing this shit. Obviously, you you probably you probably um, were practicing way more than, like, an average kid would, like, in a YMCA team yeah. or something. But... Was it was it your dad kind of pushing you to it, and or was it always also like you you wanted it to do it or something? Nah, nobody really pushed me to it. Like it was more for me. Like I decided to do it. I wanted to do it because, um, you know, like my schedule, especially joining Real Cal, was training Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three days out of the week, and driving an hour and a half. You know what yeah. I mean? Because you know, from Palm to the Thousand Oaks is even. I feel like it's a little further than even driving to L.A. You know, especially with traffic, so it took it took a while to get there. I mean, and then three hours just of, of just of driving every pretty, practice, pretty much. Yeah. You know, there and back. Yeah, right. you know, I'm getting back home late, like around already like ten, eleven o'clock at night because training's finishing around like eight. By the time I get home, yeah, it's already ten, eleven. It's a quick shower, go to bed, wake up, go to school. Yeah, go to school. You know, so I did that majority of my life, and uh, and yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't like regret any of it. You know, it was honestly the best, best time. I miss it so much, you know, just being a kid and just focusing just yeah, on soccer. Just soccer. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's something that I love to do. And, and I think what really helped balance it was, was school, school in the environment that I grew up in friends. You know what I mean? It was like two separate lives. Like, you know, I had two separate it lives. It wasn't just soccer, nah. you know, so you couldn't get tired of exactly. it or get annoyed by exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. It was like, cause at school, it was only, Basketball or football, and then outside of school, soccer. Yeah, you know right. what I mean. Like, yeah, because these kids ain't, ain't up to it, dude. Nah. They don't want to play you, bro. <laughs> nah, Come on, nah, I wouldn't want to play you either. Not even that. <laughs> well, that was, I think I think more of what he's talking about is like the commitment level that you right, have yes. to show, you know. And you like uh, like you're saying, you're getting home at fucking ten, eleven at mm -hmm. night. Uh, you know, fucking grab something to eat, take a shower, and do it all over again exactly. tomorrow. You know what I mean? Uh, so I I think there's a there's there's something that divides you from like uh somebody who's committed to like the journey of like, let me actually take you soccer and let's push mm -hmm. it to another level than to someone who's just playing like basketball, like Saturday mornings practicing. Yeah. But that was good for him while, though. You know? Like he was saying, it's good for you because then, uh, you know, like it, it would, I guess in my opinion, like as a 10, 11 year old kid, like all day soccer, you know, soccer in the morning, soccer in the afternoon and at night yeah. to have like the whole school because you don't have to worry about soccer. You're yeah. playing basketball, you have friends. Exactly. So it kind of takes your mind away exactly. from that. Exactly. It makes me miss it. Right. And that's what I was thinking because, you know, I, I played pretty football, you know, mm -hmm. all the way up to high school. And and that's what I always enjoyed. But I had some friends that like even like on off season, their dad was like, hey, you're going to come to practice mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. These kids grew up fucking hating football. Exactly. You know, they, they, they grew up like, nah, fuck that, dude. I'm tired of it. I did it all my life. Yeah. But. I think in some sense, I think it helped you out. No, you know, it did. It did for sure. And and like memories from it, which was pretty crazy. Um, I would have like obviously games still out there, so I'm driving like an hour and a half still every like every weekend to go play and then come back. And then the you know the drive back, I'm obviously so tired from the game, I'm, I pass out. And the <laughs> weird thing about it was that once I got home, it was like oh game number two because I'm just playing by myself. I got my ball. I'm in the house. I'm passing against the walls, shooting against the wall, pretending I'm a goalkeeper and scoring. You know, I was like, my imagination as a kid yeah, with yeah. soccer was just unbelievable. And like, just, I guess like having that. It's, it's an, an obsession. You, yeah, you know, it, it was. It comes to a point where like, even after a game, you get home all late and you're still playing. Yeah, games, it, was, it was weird. You know, it was weird. Obviously thinking about it now, I'm like, dude, like, Dude, give it a, just give thinking it a break. about soccer and <laughs> yeah. give it a all break, the running dude. you do, yeah. like nah, <laughs> yeah. But yet I was right when I got home and I had that power nap. I'm like, all right, back all right, at good. it. Game number two. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Hell yeah, dude. Me that, against me. That's what's up, dude. So yeah. at some point, like you mentioned, you played a youth level for the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. How does that like happen? Like, uh, was there like a certain scout that like approached you and your dad, or mm -hmm. or like how did they fucking uh, like catch eye of you? Yeah, so I mean, honestly, there's different there's different ways that where there were. I mean, I'm not too sure and familiar if they're still doing specific, you know, trainings or little camps or the way they scout right. compared to how I was because, right. uh, it, like like I said, it was completely different, you know. And um and uh, like I said, I'm I'm very grateful for 
you know, what my parents decided to do and sacrifice for me and also the, the, the club Real Socal and what they did for me and my family to give me the opportunity to play for them and get scouted. You know, I was, uh, you know, obviously my family, we're not, we didn't come up with, you know, with money like that. We, you know, we weren't broke, but we weren't, you know, rich or anything. You know, we're comfortable as much as we could. And my parents did what they had to do for their, for their, their children. And, you know, with some help, you know, it really, it really did go a long way, obviously, because look where I'm at now. And I'm very blessed to be where I'm hey, at. Shout out to your parents, man. Yeah. Shout, shout out, out to your parents. parents. Course, Those are good parents right there. Are, man. For sure. That's, that's uh, one of the things I tell a lot of, like, you know, young kids, especially when I go to talk to schools or kids at games and stuff like that. Anything, any type of, you know, conversation with kids. I don't know, just make it focus on the on the on the kids. I try to bring in the parents. Right. Because. The kids can't drive themselves. The right, kids right, right. can't go and get this gear and this and that for them. You know, the parents sacrifice a lot. But uh, but yeah, with the youth, um, I don't know if you guys know ODP. Have you guys heard of ODP? ODP. No. ODP is like, uh, I think it was like considered like a Olympic development program is okay. what it was called. And it's, oh, ba- shit, and it's basically up. like a mini all-star team, but in a region, you know, so you're so Wherever you're from, state wise, and live, like there's a specific region in that, right. right? So, like California was like region seven, I would say, and basically they would get invite you to these camps of theirs, and they'll bring in, they basically make like a mini all star team of a state, right? You know what like I mean? The, like the cream of the crop from each team, put right. them yes, all together, exactly, Let's make a little yes, all star team exactly. per se. So that's that's how I got scouted from the national team. I had sure. got invited to that. And I went to the camp and I did well and like to uh, where I made that team. And then we started playing against different regions, you know, states playing in all these big tournaments where a lot of U.S. scouts were there. Right. So we had a tournament in Oregon and out of all the regions that were there, they invited uh, like a good amount because it was I don't know how many regions, but out of let's say 10 regions, you're bringing 20 plus kids right on each on each one and only eight of 80 of them were chosen for like the first ever like US camp at that at your age. Right. And I was fortunate enough to be one of those chosen ones and after that like I never left. Right. I was getting called every camp. That is dude. that's yeah. crazy. I mean, I didn't that's even crazy. know that existed, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah to have these these like big corporate like well, like I mean, games like that, yeah, like yeah, state like, by state, yeah. like organizations yeah, are like dude. they try to put shit together. So, I mean, this is like common in like a uh, football, basketball, mm-hmm. like AAU and basketball mm-hmm. is fucking similar to this. Um, but that's cool, dude. And then like you get to step up your competition level. Yeah, exactly. Because you're not just playing like, you know, the same teams you're and uh, the same players. You're actually playing uh, some of the best players that you can at that age. Mm-hmm. How, then, was, how was your experience with that? Like, did, did you get to a point where like you thought like, oh, shit, maybe I'm not like like uh good enough like to the level of these kids or did you always feel like like hey man i could do this i I belong here yeah no i never i never thought in that negative way at all um obviously like i i had a different you know i guess like mindset because i just wanted to be a pro so bad and, and be the best and now it's a different mindset because now i am a pro and I am trying to still be the best, but I'm not thinking about being the best like ever. I'm just trying to think about being the best like myself and in my position. Right. You know, I'm not trying to focus on anything else. And uh, but yeah, like I never had that negative thought. I was always like so super confident as a kid. Um, and then in, in the position that I played, I was like, that's um, that's my position. You know, obviously there were for sure way more talented players. You know what I mean? That that came that I came up with, um, but. I never, like, saw myself less than them. Is there somebody that sticks out that you played against or played with that sticks out? Big time. Big time. They're all... Yeah, yeah, hold on. Before we get into that, because I don't think... um, I mean, I don't know how how much people know about, like, youth-level soccer, but youth-level soccer, they play, like, youth-level World Cups. They play Mm -hmm. tournaments just like the national team does. Uh, what I was reading was you were on the U.S. under-17 mm-hmm. team that uh, played at the World Cup, and you actually were on the same roster as, like, uh, Christian Pulisic, Haji Wright, mm-hmm. Weston McKinney. Like, these guys are fucking household names in soccer, yeah. you know what I mean? And you're right there training alongside uh, alongside them, playing mm-hmm. with them, living with them, like, you know what I mean, interacting with them. So uh, how is, like, that, like, when you get to that level and you see these guys and you see them now, you mm-hmm. look back, you're like, holy fuck. I was there. Yeah, no, I'm like, I'm like, I'm telling you, man, those guys, obviously the career they made for themselves has been, you know, they've worked for it very hard and they're very blessed. 
and I'm happy for each single one of them. And uh, yeah, so I grew up with them, you know, like we were all of us were there from the beginning, you know, from the very first camp of the U14. That's what age group it starts. I mean, I'm right. sure they have younger ones now, but for us, it was like 98 year only or and if you're born maybe like 99 or, or under, uh, you're there. But all of us that were 98, we were all at that one camp and there was about a hundred and something kids you know what i mean yeah there was a lot of us and that's where it all started for us and then after that we finally started playing more and and then got to the u15 level and that's where like it was our group like all those guys that had you right uh luca de la torre oh yeah i forgot tyler tyler adams Adams. weston mckinney christian pulisic like all those big name u.s soccer stars now they were we were on that one group, you know what I mean? In the U15 is where we took over, you know. We were, Jesus Christ, what the hell am I doing with my life? <laughs> yeah. It was Christ. it was it was a blessing, man. We had a great time. We had a lot of memories for sure. You know, I was very very blessed to be a part of that group and you not even be just a part of it, but right. captain it for for like a very long time. Right, you know right, right. I mean? Uh, and was, you guys uh, achieve some good success, exactly. uh, especially for like when you look at uh, what success means for like a U.S. Mm-hmm. national team, uh, even at, for a youth team like you guys did really, really well. dude. Yeah, no, we did. I mean, and another person I forgot to throw out and we just mentioned him earlier was Alejandro Sendejas was Zendejas, part, of that, right. part of that group exactly. as well. You know, uh, he he was in there and like just like a lot of other players that are still pro now, even playing in this league or in some, or across Europe. Um but yeah, like I'm saying, man, that that group was something special. Like we knew, we knew it already. We knew how how many talented players we had, and that could for sure make it pro. Right. And and I could go down that starting lineup to the bench, and majority of them are pros, right, right, either right. here in the U.S. or across in Europe. And uh, and yeah, man, like just being in, you know part of that group and you know experiencing all that we we went through, it was was really dope. You know, it was a blessing. And like I said, just to captain them and which is weird, you know, just you're looking at me and you're like, Oh, you captain them, but then I mean that's a great but, story. Yeah, so something you know? great to tell your grandkids. Exactly. You know, I, in your yeah, it's like I biography. Talk, Fuck yeah, dude. I talk about Christian Polistic, Ta- Tyler Adams and Weston, like the biggest names right now for US soccer. Right. I'm like, yeah, they're they're over there in Europe, but I captain them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah dude, I, was I, I wish I could right, see right. that. Yeah. But I think like uh and it's nothing to take away from like what your career has developed yeah. into. It's just, um, you know, things are different for everyone. Exactly. Everybody develops at a different time. Uh, sometimes you get a break that maybe somebody would have not fucking uh, gotten. Someone gets hurt. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? There's so many things that can happen. But just to be part of that, like, is something special, dude. Yeah. And as a big U.S. men's national team fan as I am, like, when I was doing my research on you, uh, I didn't know you were on that team. Mm-hmm. And when I fucking found that out, dude, I was like, I got like a half quarter chub for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I was like super fanboy, but like, it's just cool, dude. And then like for you to like have that like uh, hindsight now to look back and say like, yeah, dude, you know, I was part of something special. Uh, but that doesn't, you know, it's just like because being proud of like the like the like the young dream team, right? If you think but about it. but just it because like that, yeah. you didn't reach like or you haven't reached those levels that these guys have, mm-hmm. it doesn't take anything away from like nah. what you guys did and the type of player that you are. You yeah, know what no, I mean? That shit should be like recognized. You know what I mean? Give them a fucking round of applause. Yeah, 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 no, that's badass. Really it. It. Yeah, man. But yeah, dude. So like after that, you play, uh, you know, um, for the youth uh, <laughs> USA team. Uh, I just I'm sorry. I was just imagine them, dude. Like Eric, like a, like in a huddle with all these like big ass name guys, and he's like, "Look at me now. I'm captain. I'm captain. It was like it was also, like, a, it's also <laughs> a reflection of like your work ethic mm-hmm. and your character, dude. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm sure the coaches choose the captain. Exactly. Right? Then that um, was the thing, right? And so the coaches had amongst all these great players. He's your fucking captain. Yeah, that's, that's badass. That's something yeah, that is like a that speaks volumes. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and like I said, it's not the players picking captain because maybe that gets into who's yeah. most popular. Mm-hmm. But it's like the coaches and the the staff recognize like, hey, this guy and being <laughs> under seventeen, bro, the maturity <laughs> level you have to have. I'm to the captain, captain now. The team, you know, that's something <laughs> crazy, me. dude. Yeah, Look at no, me. I'm the captain now. Like I remember the time, like you know, the, from the U15s and even going into the U17s. Uh, just the meeting about like the captain, you know what I mean? Uh, obviously, the U seventeen one was a little bit different because of just the amount of years that we spent together as a U fifteen, and I was captain the whole time. It was like, oh, kind of already figured 
I think he's going to get the captain. You know what I mean? Right. And of course, I was hoping for it because I loved being captain. I loved that leadership role. I loved, you know, to give, you know, I wasn't controlling or anything right. not at all. But uh, but I love to have that leadership and be like, all right, we're going to do this and we're going to follow me. Set the standard. Exactly. Yeah. You know? And that's that's what, uh, you know, I tr even try to do now. I don't that's what I learned, that, you know, as a as a kid and even being a pro, especially being a pro at a young age was you don't need to be the oldest. You don't need to be the strongest, right. the fastest. You don't need to be the captain right. to be a leader. It's you know? up here, dude. It is. Yeah. It is. You know what I mean? It's about your attitude and the way you go about the game and really, like, for the team. And uh, and we had a lot of talks about that last year with, with John Hutchinson. And he pointed it out, you know, in front of everybody, which was, you know, completely true. Like, you have different leaders on every team. You have the captain, which is Yuma. Yes, Yuma, you will yell and this and that like a captain. That's fine. Oh. We have other leaders, like we had Dylan Mares. Right. Hardly would talk as much, but he led us by performance. Right. You know, he would show up. He would do what he had to do to help us. That's a leader. And, like, for myself, it was just the same thing, like showing up, trying to perform, and also communicating. And we had a lot of those people, you know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be the captain to be a leader, you know. Right. You know, anybody can. And that was a, one of the biggest things I, I learned from my career. You know what? This is what we're going to do, right, Joe? You're running <laughs> our socials. We're going to make a post, right? We're going to make a post that's going to say you don't have to be the biggest. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't or have the to be fastest. the fastest. You could still be a captain. And then we're going <laughs> to fucking quote a leader. <laughs> and you could quote Eric. Yeah, quote, there you go. quote beyond that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. It. I'm going to get a tattoo on that that's shit. That's some inspirational <laughs> shit right there. But like, you know, you're saying, dude, and it, it, like you were mentioning like uh, Coach Hutchinson, former coach yes. of the locomotives, um, fucking Yuma. Uh, he's mm -hmm. still, he's a mainstay for the locos. He's, mm -hmm. he's still there. But one of the other people that I think of when you talk about leadership, um, somebody that uh, sets the, an example for how to be a pro, you know, as someone like Richie Ryan. Yes, yeah. 100%. Uh, shout out to shout Richie, out Richie, by the way. Richie, it was just guy. his birthday recently, too. Oh, really? Um, I sent him a text, and uh, yes. I just love the way he replied. He's like, thanks, mate. And I was like, thanks, yes. Richie. Thanks, man. You can hear his yeah, I could hear him, dude. So it was just cool, but it, like... Um, to, to just shout him out and say like, yeah. you know, like, cause he's not the biggest, he's no. not the fastest. Uh, and actually the stage of his career, he was already one of the older guys. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are the guys you entrust with leading the locker room, exactly. setting the example for younger guys like you yeah. or uh, fucking um, Diego Luna, mm -hmm. people like that. That's who they look up to. And they're like, hey, they're I mean, that's just that. Look at Look at what he's doing now. Yeah, right? he became a coach. coach. Yeah, he yeah. became so, a coach. So now yeah. he's becoming a coach, but that shows you how how was he he was very concentrating on like helping the team and exactly. leading the team. Right. That's exactly. Awesome. So when did you uh, sign pro? You signed pro seventeen. You said. Yeah, I was uh, I was seventeen, going on eighteen. Literally, probably like maybe a couple of days later or a week. Um, and yeah, I signed and went straight to New York. You, basically. Went, you signed with the New York, New York Cosmos, Cosmos, right? Yes, Which is are they USL? They were NASL, NASL so, which was yeah, before USL. Exactly. Right? Well, no, USL was still around. Okay. But uh, but it was considered the USL. You know okay. what I mean? Like second division. NASL right, right, right. was considered second division and then followed by USL. Okay. And then obviously two years later, the league disappears, you know, right. you know, had their complications and USL moved up and now we're considered second division. You know, and you had your first professional goal with them, right? I did. Yeah, there's I a did. video. First of start, it. first start, first yeah. goal, first, first start, first, first goal. goal. Yes, no sir. way. Yeah, no. I had only. That is sick. I had. Rookie I had senior, sent man. it to our IG. I don't know if you want to share it. Dude, or that, send yeah. it to uh, Lena's from. <laughs> that from shit, your phone. That shit's crazy because like. Uh, like obviously that's like the dream, right? Like Yo, your first dude. start, let's get a fucking goal. No, like, you know like, what I mean? like if you if you can pull up the video, like the whole clip of it, it was the perfect dream, like right. shot because it was my first start as a pro, my first goal as a pro, and the celebration was a dream come true, dream. I've always dreamt of scoring. On beautiful grass, as in a pro, in a pro, <laughs> Not pro just that. Stage, we're gonna we're gonna bring up the video here yeah, soon. But dude. the way you scored that fucking goal, dude, I was yeah, like, but, no, as your but, first goal, dude. Yeah, my first goal. But like, I'm just more amazed of my celebration, right. getting the dream of being able to do it on the, right, the right, stage right, right. that I've always dreamt of being on. You know, sliding on my knees, like I'm. It just. So how was that? Like you know that that I'm, moment after after you score and then you're sliding on the out. floor and. You blacked, you blacked out. out. I swear, Holy you, I swear shit. you, I blacked out. Oh, dude, that's crazy. I blacked out, dude. So he's pulling it up, but oh, that's me, not that one. No, it's not that one. Let me ask yeah. you, um, real fast. Didn't come out. Um, let me see. You didn't send it. Here, you can send it. Whose IG is it on? No, no, go to the 
Okay, so, all right, so obviously you get your debut, right? Yes. Um, how long had you been with the Cosmos before that? Like, how long were you, like, uh, before you got your first team debut? Uh, well, the fir- my first team debut, like, I mean, I was there throughout the whole season, but I didn't get my debut until probably the the last couple games. The last couple games yeah, of the season? Yeah, okay. because uh, I had my debut, and then, again, like, I got subbed in eventually in, in like the next couple games and then the last game of the season was when i got my first okay. start yeah, yeah dude and so what were the nerves like did you know you were gonna fucking like uh start that game before um like, or? i kind of figured you okay. know a little bit like just with like i guess training and stuff right oh there it is look okay. the shirt. so right sure did the zoom real fast oh, okay um but yeah so okay so you're getting ready right like you have an, an idea that right you're there. gonna fucking start and then you do start, and then this yes. is what happens, right? Exactly. Such a perfect slide, right. too, bro. Look dude, at that. That was like, that's always been the dream right there. Scoring as Look a pro. Dude. First Cabeza goal. centro, centro. Cabeza. Damn. Damn. And, then, and then going to celebrate on my knees. Damn. Look at running, that. To, running right towards the flag, bro. I yeah. Love it. That yeah, was dude. sick, dude. But what, sick. What, 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 like, I mean, the, the memory, everything was just... Like blur. great, you know, yeah, but like I said, I blacked out. Like I don't remember <laughs> what anybody said to me. I don't remember doing this or that. I I don't even remember what I see in the video. Right. Like everything else afterwards, I don't remember. That's crazy. You know, dude. and uh but yeah, so but like crazy how was your family reacting to They that, ruined man. the moment, man. Some of them ruined the fucking moment. Why? Actually, what do you mean? What do you mean? They, they started mean. making fun of me because they were like because <laughs> if you look at the video, <laughs> like in the video, I'm right. going to the flag, right. but there's nobody. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. dude, you're going to celebrate a who? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but there's I, nobody there. Right, but I thought, like... I oh, yeah, there's said, nobody there. I've never, <laughs> you know, it's like, like I said, I've never played soccer, but... But that's the closest that, corner you got. Yeah, what are you going to do? Run to the side? Like, yeah. Isn't that what you do? Like, you just run to the corner. Yeah, nobody's right? there. Like, nobody's yeah. really there. You know, it's yeah. like security guards or somebody. Fuck you know? it, dude. <laughs> but, but to be fair, we're we're playing away, so... Right. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? That's a typical Hispanic family giving you shit for the smaller things. Like, hey, they're like, you could do better. No, that's what they were saying. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, come on, man. You're like, I nah. just fucking scored a nice header, bro. What hey, the fuck man, well, that's fucking do. awesome, bro. Yeah. I, I could, I mean, as a kid, you know, growing up, I, soccer was my first love of sports. <laughs> and I remember every time I pretend to score, that's what I would do, you know? Yeah, like, that's exactly. why I have scars on my knees. Because yes. I'm over here doing it in the concrete the and car, shit. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. So, yeah. okay, so after that, with the Cosmos, right? Um, you score your first goal. Uh, do you kind of like feel like at that point you're like uh like yeah dude i can really actually uh i can i can play at this level i can hang you know what i mean i mean i felt i felt that way from the beginning okay to be honest like after the really the first week of training after I, getting in there with yeah these guys, pretty much mixing you know it up and pretty shit. much yeah. I, I i really knew it from the beginning uh i was like i can totally play with these guys yeah obviously uh majority of them had more experience right they're and they were bigger taller stronger you know but uh but it didn't like take any of my abilities away. Right. You know? It didn't deter you. No, not at okay. all. Because like I said, like from the beginning, like I've always played up. I've right. never played my own age. You know what I mean? Besides the national team, if you know, and uh, but I've never played you know my own age. I was always playing one, two, three years up. Okay. So signing pro at a young age and playing against guys already in their twenties, thirties, it wasn't nothing new. Right, right, right. You know, it still had that same you know impact in my head of the game. You know, being. You know, quick and deciding, you know, playing quick, you know, l- little movements here and there. You it's know? the same plan, it's just yeah, in a different spot. Exactly, yeah. you know. So I figured it out quick that I and I knew I could do it, you know. I didn't obviously I would get nervous for sure, like any any young kid, but uh but the confidence that I had, that's that's it's the key, you know. Having confidence in yourself is is one of the biggest keys, you know, in this sport because once you lose that everything starts going downhill because then you start doubting yourself and then right, your right, game right. starts falling. You know what I mean? That's another quote right there, so, Joe. <laughs> write that shit down. So, like, how was that, like, uh, I guess, lifestyle-wise when you get to New York? Obviously, like, had you been to New York before? No. So, like, it was your first time How big up? were the rats? That's like, what, what the asking. fuck is I this? I didn't see <laughs> Oh, what? Yeah, I mean, I was <laughs> like, it's because they were training the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, New York Cosmos, we were located in Garden City, Long Island. Oh, okay, so, yeah, so it's was not New York no, City, right? Right, not right, at right, all. Right, right. No, Fucking I was liars, okay. I was dude. still far away, man. Right, we were super far away. And that, like the stadium we played at the first year was at a college. I think it was a Hofstra. Hofstra, okay. yeah, Hofstra, yeah, yeah, yeah. We played there the first year, and and uh, and that was literally right in town. Like 
probably like five, not, maybe five minutes away, right. away from our, our training fields until the second year is when we moved out of there and went into Coney Island okay. and played at a, at a baseball stadium, you know? Down there in Brooklyn, so that was a bit of a drive. Oh shit! Yeah, right. you know? and it was cool though. Like, like, uh, would you would you ever consider moving like to that part of the country? Uh, I mean, I know my my girlfriend wants to move to right. New York, for <laughs> sure, like, but yeah. I, I don't know if she wants to stay. I mean, maybe she wouldn't care of staying right. in Long Island. Long Island was was beautiful to me. It was, okay. wasn't nothing like the city at all. Like less crowded, wasn't as dirty. You know, type type of stuff like that. It was, it was more like of a retirement home hey, right, 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 you know right, what i mean right, like right. a lot of old people you know living nice houses you know just very quiet you know, neighborhood uh i wouldn't mind going back at all for sure you know um but at the end of the day like i gotta see where the career takes right, me right, first right. yeah yeah you gotta see like what happens with yeah. with that but it's kind of crazy because like yeah you it's a it's a dramatic dramatic change in like scene mm. scenery you know you go from palmdale all the way to, to a New bunch York. of buildings and trees. And yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Fucking a bunch of retired people everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so after that, how long are you with the Cosmos? Uh, I spent two years. Okay. Two years there. I mean, I was technically supposed to be there for three, but with all the complication with the league and, and everything, you right. know, I was fortunate enough for like going into the third year that I had got, bu you know, bought out right. by San Jose Earthquakes. Right. So I was fortunate enough for that, you know, because who knows what would have happened after that. Right, right, right. And uh, yeah, so then San Jose came knocking in and, and took me took me out of my, my contract and took me to the MLS, which was great. <laughs> That's yeah. sick, dude. How was yeah. that feeling, man? That, that's dude, what I want to know. Like, I was like, yeah, look, at, I'm, I'm making it, man. Major I League made Soccer, it. Yes, baby. <laughs> yeah, dude. Now it's a different goal, you know, different different dream and different determination, you know. Like, different corner to slide to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't get the opportunity to, but, right. you know, hopefully I could get back and then I'll have hopefully more right. opportunities. Yeah, to yeah. yeah. So, and like, what were the, was there like a connection to like San Jose, like from your time in California or was that like uh -huh. a totally different thing? These guys like were looking for mm -hmm. players. They end up fucking signing you. Uh, well, they bought you out, right? Mm -hmm. They bought your contract out. Um, so, but like that was all random. You didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah, no, no, I didn't. Like I never had any ties to San Jose just because right. San Jose is still about six hours. North right, right, right. You know, it's, it's up north. And, uh, yeah, I never ha had any tights with them, you know. So I don't know how m much it, you know, went down between it besides, you know, hearing that they did scout me. Right. And, you know, my second year, at, you know, with the Cosmos, I had, a you know, a breakthrough season. You know, I, I did I did very well. I played a lot of games, scored some a few goals. And, you know, I was finalist for, you know, what do you call it, player, young player of the year type right. of stuff. And dude, uh, what haven't you done, dude? You yeah, I, see, I, I, see I see here done a lot. <laughs> you done a lot. Man. I see here that you guys played against uh, Man U. Oh yeah, dude, that was a that was sick. That's sick, dude. dude. Like, hey, uh, share that. Joe. You're probably like all geeked out for that. Yeah, too, right? man. Like, I was fucking Manchester United. That was my first year. First year Hell with the Quakes, yeah. and we had a a friendly against Manchester. So we played against Alexi, Alexis Sanchez. Alexis Sanchez, bro. We played Andre like Herrera. Uh, Who else was uh, Edison Cavani was on that Man U nah, team? Nah, no, nah. Not, okay. yet, not, not yet, yet right? No. Yeah, dude, that's fucking badass. Yeah, dude. man, it was it was it was dope. It was, it was cool experience for sure. I mean, the the guys really made it made it something special for nice. sure. Yeah, Hell yeah just dude. just the atmosphere as well. The fans were great. I uh, I've been to Levi Stadium one time. Oh, yeah. uh, I saw a USA versus Colombia oh, uh, Copa America match. Fucking James Rodriguez scored Oof. a goal and shit. I was yeah. like, that shit was sick. USA got their ass kicked, but yeah. I mean, it was still cool to check it out. So, what do you remember about your MLS debut here? Uh, I remember, you know, going in for a couple minutes. You know, uh, there were some there were some good moments. I remember going like kind of body to body to with uh, Bradley Wright Phillips. Oh, okay, and the he, Englishman. And he, yeah, yes, he, he comes on one of my photos too. Like. I don't, I don't, yeah, he was, uh, he, he was up there, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, just remember I had a, actually a hometown friend that was at the game for my debut, you know, he, I was on the roster, so I kind of were, I was like, oh yeah, you know, like I could have an opportunity to go play, but not really, you know, and just him being there, having somebody, you know, from back home and, you know, I consider him as family as well. Cause we grew up, you know, my whole childhood with, you know, together and, you know, he, him being there and experiencing it with me for my debut was, you know, was dope. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember a majority of, you know, my, my time 
my time at San Jose, just not that one. Hopefully, <laughs> so, the so, Meg, the Meg that was coming. <laughs> so what? Uh, um, what's it like, like when you go to a new club? Mm-hmm. Um, because you've you've been through a few clubs now. You were also at uh, Orange County uh, mm-hmm. SC, right? Um, but like when you get to a new club, what is it like? Um, obviously, you want to build a relationship with your teammates, right? Yeah. But at, at the end of the day, you guys are still competing for minutes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So what is it like getting to a new club, knowing, hey, I need to get in. Mm-hmm. I need to get my foot in the door. I need to start getting minutes. And then, like, meeting new coaches, new trainers, new directors. Like, mm-hmm. how is that? Like, what's that transition like? Uh, I mean, I feel like everybody's different. I mean, for myself, like, I've never been that type of, like, arrogant or just, you know, a bad person. Like, I try to get everybody to like me and, and, you know, respect me as I, you know, respect everybody else. And to the point where, like, you disrespect me, then, yes, of course, I'm not yeah. going to continue respecting you. Yeah, we'll, right. see, we'll see you all the time, Yeah, exactly, yeah. you know. But, uh, but yeah, I, would, I wouldn't go in to be, you know, like, a cocky or anything like that. Again, you know, uh, obviously, I, I would speak to majority of the guys, try to, you know, get to know them and let them get to know me and make friends. But then... Obviously, when you step on the field, yeah, there isn't any friends. You know, right. I'm, I'm, I want to play. They want to play. He wants to play. Everybody wants to play. So it's basically, yeah, it's like once you step on the field, there's like yeah. nothing else. It's you, open. It is, it's man. Open you know exactly. Yeah. And then we'll make up or whatever. If we I'll don't, buy your beer after this. Dude. Yeah, pretty Maybe much. Yeah, first. pretty much. Yeah. Because like, like you know, one example, especially with my time at San Jose, was. Chris Wondolowski. Oh, dude. Fucking dude. Chris Wando, Jesus. bro. Chris, Chris <laughs> Wondolowski was a different breed on the field. Right. Like, a different personality, a different type of player. Like, just completely different. Because <laughs> then you you talk to him, you meet him off the field. Dude, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Right. Ever sorry, meet. sorry I yelled at you on the yeah, field. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he would, man. He would apologize sometimes. And it's like, to the point now, we're like, you know what, Chris? We're used to it, bro. We're yeah. good. We know how you are. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like no hard feelings. No, yeah. not at all. Like we, and you respect the guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like his career, what he's done. It's like you. You can't just be like, you know what? No, right. fuck you, Chris. Like you shouldn't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No. I mean yeah. the guy. He the 2014 World Cup. Uh, mm-hmm. He was on the U.S. and U.S. Men's National Team. Uh, they played Belgium. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lost two to one, but he had like yeah. a fucking golden opportunity late nah. in the game to yes. tie that shit, dude. Yeah. Uh, but he was also like MLS leading scorer, dude. Yeah, he, he still like, is. He was a fucking baller, and this guy was not uh, the tallest guy, Mm-mm. wasn't the fastest guy, but this guy in the box was, was deadly, dude. dude. He knew how to finish. He knew how to get in it's position. Just like Eric said, man, you ain't gotta like, be the the, the no. tallest, the fastest. But the yeah, strongest. dude, Chris Wondolowski, dude, I always remember that guy. Yeah, um, man, because uh, like I said, like. That dude was a like uh, the soccer terms poacher. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like always in the right spot, gonna fucking put yes. like if the goalie spills it, right? He's right yes. there. You know what I mean? Yeah, like he and to be fair, like if you would go see him train, after training, he's working on all that stuff. Right. He's in the box twenty four seven practicing finishing, shooting, cutbacks, like all these different right, stuff right, right, that right. you see him do. And it's it just shows like all that practice, like it's it's that not Mamba for mentality. Yeah. Yeah, 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 man. So it was it was amazing to see, you know, and be a part of it before he retired, you know, and actually even be there as the day he retired, right, you know? Right, right. Hell yeah, dude. That's retired. fucking dope. Yeah. Dude, Shit, and I'm seeing this. Do uh, you play against Schweinsteiger? Boston. Boston Schweinsteiger. This is 2019. Uh, no, no. I, no, I didn't play the game, but... You guys put your team played them. Yeah. That That's was still dope. Yeah, that was the that was the day Wondolowski, Wondolowski broke the... Yeah, the scoring record. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, that was that was a day. Like in Boston, Schweinsteiger. Yeah. I didn't man. even know he went to MLS, dude. <laughs> yeah, Sounds dude. like a beer. Yeah, no, nah, he's a fucking legend for Germany, dude. He's yeah, fucking he one is. of the best midfielders you'll ever fucking oh, see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, so, okay, so after San Jose, mm-hmm. um, I forget, you went to another club, right? Uh, So it was, uh, it was a Before bit. Before Orange County, Yeah, right? it was a little weird, uh, kind of. So San Jose had, like, affiliated USL team. Right. Who was uh, Reno. Okay. Reno. Reno, Reno 1868. 1860. Okay. Yeah. So it's when I had first joined, basically my whole first season, I wasn't getting any, any minutes or even getting put on the bench. So I would train all week with San Jose Earthquakes and then get sent to Reno to, for, for games on the weekend. Right. So I did that basically majority of the whole year until the coach got sacked. And the, the last like five games is when I started, the assistant coach started putting me in as a, as a sub on the roster and then actually giving me minutes, you know, and then I started probably the last two games of the season 
And in the first game that I started against Colorado Rapids, I did make team of the week. I was oh, on nice. the bench of it, but that's when I made team of right, the week, right, right. you know. So it, my first year, yeah, it was it was more you know, Reno, USL area. And then again, you know, going into the next two, three years, uh, it was the same thing pretty much. You know, actually my second year, though, my second year with the new coach with Matias Almeida, uh, I started off with the first couple like games, I think the first four with going to Reno. And then after that, I just made my way up, and basically I was on the roster for every game, and then I would get minutes here and there. You know, do you I mean? think that's like a like something uh, maybe? Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm just saying, like being in your position as a soccer player, um, having to kind of deal with like the coaches making, like obviously making like the the, the choices of who's going to start, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like you said, like once this coach was ha uh, uh, sacked, then you got this new coach, and he puts you in, mm -hmm. right? So does it ever get to a point where like you're thinking like oh man this coach has his favorites or you know um I mean yeah of course but at the same time like I don't try to dwell over that right like, because to be fair every coach is gonna have their favorites right right, right. I could I, to be like I could be a coach you could give me eleven kids right now and I'm gonna tell who the difference between who's right, the right, best right. one and who's I'm the be first like, name on the yeah, fucking uh, you know what I mean? on the lineup you know what I mean yeah but I, but uh it's not that it's not like the coach like. The coaches like mistreated me or treated right. me different. No, but for sure they did have their favorites. Were like, okay, how many more chances is this guy gonna get until I get right, my right, chance? You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right. But, uh, but I think that's what's hard. I mean, like I've always thought about like these professional mm -hmm. athletes, right? In any sport, uh, what it is, and then it, it made me think like, okay, you have like, let's say I'm playing basketball, and, mm -hmm. and I'm I have like you know Steph Curry on my fucking team, yeah. right? <laughs> but I feel like you know by stats, I'm like dude, this guy's been sucking for so long. Mm -hmm. When is this coach gonna give me a chance, yeah. right? But he doesn't throughout exactly. the whole season. He still keeps him on, right? Yeah. But then like that's what I mean, like dude, this gotta be like some type of like you know like issue or anger that these players could get at some point and be like, okay, dude, if I was also a coach, of course he's a badass. Mm -hmm. But it gets to a certain point where like, bro, try something new, try me. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. I mean like. It is difficult because at the same time, like, that's something I did learn and get, got to realize, you know, them being the coach, they're they're, the one, they're, yeah, they're, they're working the for their so, job, yeah, their right. job as well. You know what I mean? Right. They're trying not to lose their contract and get sacked. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? And if you're having like, you know, a player getting paid so much. Yeah. Like there's a reason why, you know, he should be starting and. Or he's gonna do well, and spending all this money on this guy, yeah, he's gonna start exactly. You know, and that's that's one of the things about it. You know, it's a it's a business. You know, right. business politics. You know, all that stuff. Um, but but eventually, yeah, like like we were talking about earlier with like Diego Luna, like you gotta take your opportunities. You know, what right. I mean, once you get them, you gotta take them because if you don't. Who knows when the next right. one's gonna come? You know what I mean. And or if there's gonna be another one. Right? Exactly. And you never know, like where where you know you do get of those opportunities. Who's watching mm -hmm. now? And then where you can end up. Yeah. What other opportunities gonna get? And to then you, another yeah. thing too, like uh, I know it's not. I mean, obviously, yeah. There's probably some favorites, but I know with coaching too, it's a lot of style of play. Like yeah. The style of team that I'm gonna have is mm -hmm. depending on the coach. Uh, we might sit back more possession oriented yep. uh, compared to another coach that you know we're uh, we're gonna play on mm -hmm. the fucking ball. We're gonna press. You know, we're gonna yeah. fucking get after these guys. So it all depends. Like every coach's style of play is gonna dictate like who they're gonna fucking uh, choose for their starting. No, a hundred percent, and that's. That is already one of the conversations that I've had with a lot of young guys right now on the team right. that I've been training with, you know, like uh, like maybe just because of last season and me starting a lot of the games and also doing well for myself, they can see it as like, oh, you're, you're going to start, bro, right away. No, I'm not. Right. Not. There's there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee to, to yeah, anybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe just our captain, you, my yeah, maybe, but not even him. You know right. what I mean? Like you never know because, and that's what I told him. It's like. Don't with the new it. with the new coach, it, he could have a different style of play that I guess uh, I won't fit. Right. You know what I mean, or anything else. And but but right now it's just about you know focusing on myself and trying to continue to earn my spot. Right. You know, and so, when I'm over. So before we get into the locos mm -hmm. talk, we're gonna, we're gonna take a break before that. We're already at like 48 minutes here. This shit's flying by. Cool. Um, but before we get into like the new coach. Uh, you coming to El Paso, mm. uh, you actually won USL championship with Orange County yes, SC, sir. right? Uh, how was that, dude? I mean, you got to raise a trophy, you know what I'm saying? Dude. dude. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the only trophy I've ever won is this W from fantasy football. That's something. Hey, it's a dub, right? Yeah. It's a dub. First yeah. trophy ever. <laughs> yeah. No, that 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 uh that day, that moment, that that journey, man, was legit something something special. Because uh, I've won already. That's my second trophy as a pro. My first one was my first year with uh, New York Cosmos. Okay. We won like we won everything there. We won the spring season, the fall season, and then the whole like season Shh. cup. You know, we Damn. we had a badass. We took it all, dude. We had a badass team. Then that's why I don't feel that bad not playing as much. You know, because we had a sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had a sick ass team, bro. Yeah, they had, yeah, me, yeah. yeah, they had. A, they, we had a badass team. So uh, this, but this one hit more, man, because I felt like I did. My part, you right. contribute. You know, I contribute, exactly. and your journey, dude. Like yeah. you were saying, fucking taking flights or not flights, taking trips from being with the the earthquakes to fucking the USL yeah. team with Reno. So doing that every weekend and shit, and then now here it crescendos in a way. Yeah, you where know, you fucking win a USL championship. Exactly. Bro. Like even though it's USL championship, like I don't take it for granted at all. Like it just it did hit more because of all the the what do you call it i wouldn't like all the stuff that was going down in san jose of not getting minutes of right. not really getting my opportunity and finally stepping up and speaking out of saying yo like i, I would like to go on loan because i want to play it, it, it shows um, you know? it, it shows your courage to yeah. kind of stand up for yourself and yeah. be like hey this is what i'm choosing this is what i want mm -hmm. and look at where it got you bro. exactly it's awesome. exactly but it took me Four years to speak up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but at but, least you did it, man. At least I at did least it. You right. Exactly. Yeah. At least I did it because look how it turned out, you know. Right. So it did hit, man. Like once that whistle blew, like emotions were high. Uh, I had my I had my girlfriend out there. I had my dad out there. Uh, yeah. So emotion was high because it really did hit. It felt like something that like I really worked for. And it's like a know, check mark on your bucket exactly, list. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. You know. So and that's one thing that I that I would wish you know people could experience more of to have that mindset of like i want this shit again right yeah. i want this feeling again because there's nothing like it right right, right you know right. what i mean so even like going into last year you know i wanted to win it you know i wanted to win it again just because of the previous year winning it yeah, you know right. that night was just amazing it's almost like like i've never ran a mile in my life but i've heard about oh, the runners we know. high we know you know like the runners high that you yeah. can't supposedly i've never had it before uh but yeah it's like that same feeling like i need to get back to yeah. this like yeah. i need to experience that again bro that's why tom brady's still out here fucking balling bro exactly this guy's like there's no better He's feeling in the to world feeling yeah. Like, yeah i'll have a supermodel wife doesn't fucking matter i need to win a fucking <laughs> NFL Another. championship baby i need an eighth super bowl ring oh, and i'm taking out the cowboys got, on the way i got there, some naked fingers i need yeah. to put a ring on Oh. Yeah, like it's that determination, it's it the is. drive, it's that it's the the desire, the fire that burns in these guys yeah, to fucking man. be the greatest, to do the best, it to is. make it to that level, dude. So, one hundred percent, man. And speaking about rings, I would love a ring for that, but. Orange County, man, they're stacking, man. <laughs> He's oh, like, by on. the way, I Orange County, rain. come oh, on, man, Hell like, yeah, dude, like, yeah, dude, that's we, so like, sick, dude. like, you don't understand what we what we went through, man, right, as a team. Give us a fucking ring. At least yeah. you can do is give us a fucking exactly, ring, exactly, man. <laughs> man. It's the first ever in club history. <laughs> Damn, like, yeah, that's crazy. Wow. They just give you a, some, a sandwich, some subway, right, right. Right. get man, on the plane, a ring, a little slap in the ass. Good job. So hold on, before we we before we go to break here, yeah, this picture that Joe has up. Oh um, man! You have the USL Cup. Yep. Uh, are you smoking a cigar? Is I'm that what smoking, you're smoking that cigar. He's dude. like, yo, I've never yeah, had a cigar yeah. before, but fuck it. Like, no, I, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah, fuck my lungs right now, dude. Dude, dead ass. That's my first cigar. Dude, yeah? that's my first cigar. I was like, <laughs> I, you're smoking it like a pro. I was yeah, man. Say. I've been watching a lot of Michael Jordan. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was prepping for this. I was, yeah, man. Yeah, bro. That's yeah, because because uh, obviously you know we're at the hotel and this and that and. Like, I already knew, like, it was already in my head. Like, if we win, like, I want a cigar with my trophy. Right. You know what I mean? So that day and everything, I'm obviously, you know, resting, getting ready for the game. My girlfriend's there, and she's hanging out with a friend. And they go out, and she comes back with a little gift basket. And she bought there me. She got hey, me a cigar. Shout out to the girl. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Yeah. Shout out yeah. the to my girlfriend. Yes. My baby mama. Hey. hey. Yes, man. Hell yeah, dude. All right, well, uh, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to take a quick break, but when we uh, come back, we're going to talk to Eric about uh, choosing rep choosing to represent the El Salvadorian national team uh, at a prof at a at a at a at well, the first team level, I guess. Yeah, you senior say. level. Senior level, that's the word sure. I was fucking looking for. Uh, we'll talk to him about that. We'll talk to him about coming to EP, joining the Locos, uh, and then also we're going to kind of talk to him about this new season. 
Uh, I think you guys are what, like 45 days out, 42 days out, something yeah, like something that. Something like that. Um, and then obviously a new coach. So the challenges that that brings. And then uh, we'll also do some five random questions at the very end. So uh, episode 164, conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast with your El Paso locomotive midfielder, Mr. Eric Alvillo in the building. So we're going to take a quick, gr- a quick break, guys, but we will be right Try to replace me, but bitch, I'm one of a kind You know I be speed racing up on the Highway 95 Look, I don't give a fuck why these niggas hating on me Oh, wait, because I got your bitch tripping on me She said my love promethazine got her leaning on me Spanish mommy with that accent that she call me Poppy okay. Yo, what it do, what it do, it's your boy Misa from the pod Yo, I know y'all have noticed how good me and Chris look rocking this merch, huh? Well, this is all thanks to our sponsor, Next Gen Sports. Next Gen Sports is your local destination for all things sports, from sports cards to authentic sneakers, customizable t-shirts, and even official team jerseys. So whether you're buying, selling, or trading sports merch, cards, or sneakers, Next Gen Sports is your go-to for the most fire sports gear. What's that? Oh, you're not a big sports fan? <laughs> That's all gravy, baby. Next Gen Sports is still your go-to spot for all customizable shirts. Just like this one. Look. Sheesh. Anyways, guys. The best part about all this, it's super affordable. There's delivery here in El Paso. Shipping anywhere in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. So, go on. Go. Go check out Next Gen Sports on all social media platforms including tiktok it's all in the description below guys go support the people that rock with us tell them that chris and misa from the pod send you and as always stay fresh all right guys we are back from break episode 165 with our boy mr eric Calvillo in the building yes sir Thanks again for being here again, man. Uh, of course, we man. really do fucking appreciate it. Uh, I'm having a really good time. I love Same. soccer. Like I was telling you, I've never played before. But, uh, <laughs> dude, I just love soccer, dude. I fucking got into FIFA. Fucking, uh, now It's my favorite sport by far. Yeah. Um, and just to have you here sitting with us, dude, it really means a lot to me. It means a lot to, to, to the podcast for sure. Uh, so thank you one more time. Round of applause. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for inviting me. And, guys, uh, you know, there's, there's a few things I like to do in life. One of them, drink a nice cold beer. <laughs> the second, maybe light up a THC joint if we're around it. And the third thing is popping podcast cherries, bro. Yeah, That's like yeah. one of my favorite things mm. to do, my favorite pastime. And uh, <laughs> we did that again for you today. Yeah. Uh, so how are you feeling the vibes? You said you've done like a Zoom pod, yeah, uh, but nothing in person. So how, how are you feeling the vibes, man? Oh, man, this is way better than online. Hey, yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah, that dude. long ass drive was worth it. It's worth it, <laughs> yeah, man. This yeah, shit is yeah, fun, yeah, man. This shit is dope, man. Just a, like, like you said, it's, a, it's just a different experience. You right. know what I mean? And I like getting out of my comfort zone and stuff like that. You right, know right, right. I think? And that's one thing that uh you know i'm very grateful for for my girlfriend who's really gotten me out of my comfort zone because i was a big like homebody like just do what i have to do just there and then just focus on soccer right right right. and not really get to experience life outside of soccer you know so your girls are like hey you need to get out there what are you doing pretty pretty much yeah pretty (laughs) much not even that more for her she'll be like oh let's go to this if i can get that i'm like well as long it's getting me out of the house and i'll see something i guess you know what i mean right we're we're speaking off of uh, mike but uh you're expecting a child i am man i am yes thank you first kid baby boy baby boy man he's coming he's coming quick not quick enough great way to start the year dude it is Fucking find out you're having a boy. Yes, sir. Uh, you come on this fucking podcast with yeah. us. You have a fucking uh, USL season that's fastly approaching, dude. Like, there's so much to watch, look bro. To. We're gonna end up having his son on the pot too. Yeah, <laughs> I'll bring him, man. I'll bring him for, for sure. sure. <laughs> nah, it is. It's like right now. This year already has started off with a big bang, man. Right. It's, it's, it's looking great, and I'm you know truly excited for what's to come. You know, right. not just for the season, but again, like. The fatherhood in your personal life, yes, yeah, yeah, sir. yes, Hell yeah. Sir, but that's what's up, dude. Yeah, so, dude. Um, like I said, congratulations one more time. Thank um, you. It's a big step. Like I'm not, a, I'm not a father. I'm a dog. I'm a dog dad, as some people would say. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure you know the excitement that you have and uh, the joy that you'll feel when you first meet your son is going to be something that you've never felt before. So uh, that's what's up, bro. So real fast, dude. Um, I was uh, interested uh, in asking you about. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you uh, decided at one point, right? Because now you play for uh, El Salvador, the national team. Mm -hmm. Um, At some point, uh, you had to make a decision, right? Like to switch uh, because like for you guys who don't know in FIFA, like you can't just like decide one day I'm playing for this country or this country. Like there's eligibility requirements. You have to have um, uh, ability to get citizenship in certain countries, Mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So it's not something that like is just done on a whim. Um, but growing up for you, um, or not growing up, but like growing in your career yeah. and having to make that decision, how was that? And like, uh, like what made you decide ultimately to say, yeah, you know what? I need to switch to, to El Salvador's national team. Um, it was, it was pretty easy and pretty funny to be honest, because, um, what year was it? I want to say, I want to say last year, last year, I think it was a, tw- not even last year. Sorry. The year before that 2021, um 2021 year was when i first started and it was with the under 23s okay so i had a phone call during the off season of 2020 in december from a former coach of mine through the u.s national team right so he was my first u.s national team coach who is hugo perez who is currently the head coach of the senior national team now and you know he's obviously played for the u.s national team in his in his career he's played for the el salvador as well so I got a phone call from him, and at the time it was only just about, I guess he was trying to be the guy to get in contact with me and other players to persuade to come and join. Right. There was no talks about him taking over as a coach or any of that. It's but just a recruiter. Yeah, pretty much. So I, that's what I thought he was working on with them. And, uh, and it was a pretty easy decision just because of my history with the U.S. national team and how – even the history itself of players getting contacted and getting called up, there there weren't a lot of any more Latinos getting called up. So right. it was a eye opening of going to now another part of my, you know, background. Your heritage, exactly. Right. Because my mom was born and was born there, and she, and, you know, just taking now, you know, a bit of her with me and being able to represent her country and now my my country, you know. Um, so yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, fuck, dude. If, I mean, if, if you could do something for a mom, any mom, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you're in that position, and then to to say like, hey, I have the opportunity to represent my mom's mm-hmm. country, you know, like even though she doesn't live there anymore, she yeah. came over here for a reason, but she's yeah. from there. I'm sure she, I'm sure your mom still loves her country. Oh you know, no, hundred so. percent. She goes and visits a, a lot now. She does. She goes back uh, with my grandmother. And they'll go back and see the you know the, her side of the family, cousins, uncles, and stuff. So so yeah, so it was uh you know it was for her as well, but also for me, you know, yeah. just seeing that opportunity of being able to play for a different national team and maybe getting a better you know spot of right. making it to the senior level right, a right, little right. quicker. And yeah, and that's what eventually ended up happening. You know, I went through the U twenty three program. You know, trained for the Olympics for the qualifiers. We didn't end up qualifying, but. It opens still doors for the first team, you know, and uh, and right now I'm still, you know, on that journey, on that quest of continually getting called up for the right. first for the first team there and getting more minutes, you know, getting my, my 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 stats up there and, you know, just again, representing, you know, El Salvador the best I can. And so, like, uh, when you compare, like, uh, domestic soccer matches to international matches, there's no comparison, Not right? Not at all, when, man. when you wear the crest of your country, when other people wear the crest of their country, uh, the the passion, the fight mm-hmm. that these guys Patriotism have. Patriotism just comes like, out. And yeah, dude. I mean, like, look at <laughs> us. We're out there yeah. 8 a.m. at a bar fucking <laughs> going <laughs> fucking out crazy. The We're not oh, even yeah. played. Imagine being a player, dude. The, the fucking yeah. joy and excitement you must feel and, like, the... Just the fucking overall drive that you get mm-hmm. from doing something like that. So the the level of, of gameplay is just another, like, it's another notch, right? Yeah, it is. It is 100%. And like like you said, like, the atmosphere for those games are surreal. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, the, their passion is, you know, without any doubt, you, like, you're never going to see that anywhere else, you know? And, right. And to be honest, you will not see that in any other sport, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, dude, by far, dude, you know? easily. And and it's, it's a funny story. It was like my first real call-up to the senior national team was a friendly against Guatemala in D.C. So that was my first call-up for the, for the senior, you know, El Salvador national team. So I flew out there. I had my, my, girl, my girlfriend fly out as well just, you know, because I, like, I just love for her to be a part of, like, my journey. You right, know what yeah. I mean? And I'm sure she, she loves it too. So her, her being out there, it, she was kind of by herself though. You know what I mean? Since I'm playing, she's by herself. And I try to – she's never been in that type of environment. She's new to soccer as well, especially as a fan or, or, or a girlfriend of a player, you know. 
And I try to tell her, you know, like, you, there's no way you're going to the game by yourself. Yeah, it's going to get crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, that, 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 uh, that passion, that atmosphere is completely, you know, different. It gets out of hand because of just... Imagine being, like, somebody that's never been to a soccer yeah, game or even that close to soccer and, and they show up to sh- something like that. Dude, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Ridiculous. It could go either way, man. It could be like, yo, dude, I'm down for this shit every fucking yes. weekend or don't do not do that shit to me. <laughs> exactly, because, like, there, never were, again. Yeah. there were incidents for sure, like, in the area she was sitting at that was, like, getting a little hectic and stuff like that. And it's like, I try, I'm try. i trying to tell you, like, this is why, especially as a woman... You sh- you you couldn't have gone by yourself, you know. Yeah. So, but I was fortunate enough that we had, you know, family friends that were going to the game as well that she could go and sit with, and experience, you know, the game and that atmosphere without any drama and you know being protected or being safe. Yeah. Yes, exactly. She, but uh, but yeah, just that funny, you know, story of <laughs> her thinking, no, no, I'm good. I, it's fine. It can't be that bad, you You're know. Like, nah, you, have no idea. Idea. you have no idea. Uh, no. Yeah, whatsoever. I mean, yes. you never know, dude. She could have been the ones that are like to start the fireworks up in the stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. She's all throwing flares. She's, <laughs> She's all throwing flares. That's my right there. Yeah, dude. I that's mean, crazy. To, yeah, to be fair, she probably would if you're like, you know, like you said, starting to sh- throw smokes and all this other stuff on the field, like they do. She would want to join that. Yeah, she would be yeah, like, "That yeah. looks fun." Yeah, you got she, one for me. Yeah, exactly. She's a she's a wild one, man. She's a wild. One. She keeps me on my toes for sure. Hey, that's what's up, dude. And yeah, I can only imagine what it's like, like uh, wearing the crest of a of a country, playing at a international level. Um, you know, you, you see the recent World Cup that we just had. Uh, what it means to a country like, uh, not even to the country, to a person like Lionel Messi, exactly. uh, and the people of Argentina. They fucking flooded the streets yeah. like for days and shit. Like it's the passion that, like you said, you don't see it in other sports, no. and which is why I think soccer is the number one sport. Uh, and it's not just because I think it; it's because mm-hmm. the world fucking thinks it. You exactly. Know what I mean? And no. so it's crazy, dude. And so, like, I mean, for you, I'm sure that was like something that. You could only dream of, you know? Yeah, no, like, and speaking about that, like, like I said, like, you will never see that kind of passion in, like, in any other sport, and that's the perfect example. When would you ever see, really, that kind of, like, country or even a city really devote everybody going into town to celebrate with each other for a turn winning a tournament winning mm-hmm. a world cup or anything like that like yeah you have the super bowl they'll have their parade right but that's that's nothing but you're you're, st- you're bringing an entire country yeah. to fucking stop and celebrate exactly not just like when the cowboys wins like uh, like everyone in well, these, these the hell, soccer wait, wait, fans cowboys. are acting like it's a fucking super bowl like yeah. a regular season game that's, yeah, what's, exactly. that's what's fucking crazy about it that's exactly. what I love. so yeah. like uh before we move on to like uh you coming and joining the locos um is there was there anything like when you decide to to switch to El Salvador, mm-hmm. right, and you get to meet like these new your new teammates for the first time, mm-hmm. uh, do they have like any like a uh, like outlook on you being like a an American that like decided to 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 rep El Salvador? Or are they kind of like with open arms, like say, hey, yeah, dude, like you're one of the squad now? Um, no, not not the players. I mean, to be honest, like when I first you know got there, they they were very welcoming. Very nice. Yeah, they yeah, re- yeah. they respected me. They tr- they treat they treated me right. You know, they made me feel welcome. Um, fans wise, yeah, of course, yeah, of you know, course. you're gonna yeah, have, yeah. especially if I'm not performing or doing what they think I right. should do, yeah. type of stuff, you know, what they're used to. And, and, uh, yeah, he's like, he ain't no messy, yeah, you know, they think just because I'm coming from, you know, America, the America yeah. I should be fucking, shit. yeah, I should be the right. shit, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? But that's not the case, you know, like, we're, I'm still, you know, this average player and, you know, still trying to come and, I think I can and will make a difference in the team and the, right. the you know the national team, but at the end of the day, I was, I'm not I'm not Messi I'm not Cristiano Ronaldo where I'm gonna be you know taking us to the top like right, that you right. know what I mean and at the end of the day like there's just those two guys are are rare that right. can really like you know carry a team majority of the time you it's a team it's a team game so you need team a team effort. yeah exactly but but yeah as the, as the players though now like. They're, those guys were they're all great guys man they they really looked out for me for sure yeah dude that's what's up yeah so is okay. there any pranking that's happened or not to like me they know, <laughs> they, 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 they know man not they me know, not they know. Me. i am one to be <laughs> messed with brother yeah, yeah man. no but uh, they yeah. do they do pranking between each other right. and stuff yeah but i try not to get involved oh. the last time i tried uh, it didn't work out <laughs> but like, they oh, didn't prank. it wasn't a prank it was just trying to get into like 
sm- smack talking and stuff. And they're quick with it. They're quick with their comebacks. They got the quick talking shit. Yeah, they're with it. Okay, Donald Trump. Exactly. That shit's so cool, though, dude. I mean, like, you know, to be involved with so many different types of locker rooms, types of different atmospheres, different different cultures, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure the culture for, like, with the El Salvador team, probably a little different than, like, with the U.S. team. But, you know, that's to be expected, you know what I mean? And even then, like, it's different for them because they're all coming from a different part of life. Like yeah, they all speak you know, Spanish. Time, yeah, right? they all speak Spanish too. Like, yes, I don't know if like if you're. Uh, I know you probably know Spanish. But no, I do, and I that's, don't know how fluent you are. Yeah. And they're talking a different dialect mm-hmm. and shit. You know what I mean? Super fast. Yeah, so that was one of the things as well. I mean, and that was I guess the easiest way to joke on me because I'm not as fluent in Spanish, right. but my Spanish is good. But it's more Mexican. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah you yeah, know, because yeah. that's the way I grew up. Right, right, you know? right. It was more in the Mexican side. Like my dad's family is way bigger than my mom's, and that was who I was associated with. And That's really, what you grew up with, exactly. Yeah. You know, so I learned the Mexican dialogue and slang and all that stuff, and not really much about you know the Salvadorian part. So going there, yeah, they it was like not even it's a different Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were yeah. like, "You're you're more Mexican," you know. Like, <laughs> I'm but, American, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but no, but they they hardly would talk about it like that, but. You know, it, that was the easiest, like, you know, little, I guess, like, shit talking, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so put us in your shoes mm. uh, when it, the, <laughs> when, I guess, not the, I guess the idea or, I mean, the uh, the opportunity for coming to the locomotives, like, presents itself. So, like, what's going on with you at that time? Mm-hmm. And uh, how are you, like, uh, in contact with people from the locomotives? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> Richie Ryan. Jeez, Richie! Richie! Yes, sir. Two first names. I love it. Good job, mate. <laughs> yeah, good job, yeah, mate. <laughs> my mate. Yeah, he was the he was the one to reach out and really like ask about what my situation was for you know the upcoming season and what I was planning or thinking, and really like you know threw it out there of like you know locomotives was interested and really would love for me to come and you know that's where I got involved with you know my agent and communicating with them. Because uh, obviously everybody really thought I would just stay at you know Orange County just because I, we won, you right, know? right, right. But there's like you know, we talked about better opportunities, yeah, yeah better yeah. opportunities for sure. And there's like still not even that. It's just now it's like you got to think about other stuff, not just soccer wise. Because at that time I I was living with my girlfriend. I was basically starting to settle down and have a life, right? Not just for myself. So I can't only think about myself, you know. And, and yeah, with, a, with the Paso coming in, you know, obviously they better opportunity because they showed a little more interest and they, you know, communicated well with me and really pick point, you know, the, the like my demands, basically. You they know? showed that they were really interested. Yes, yeah. exactly. They weren't messing around. They weren't like, you know, back and forth of like negotiating this and that or maybe we give you that. Maybe we don't give you this. No, it was like, OK, if I want this, I want that cool we'll work with that and simple you know what i mean quick and easy quick and easy and sweet. yeah you know where <laughs> with orange county it was a little more difficult because not only california you know having i wanted my own place you know in the in the pricing but there was just a lot of like miscommunication where i i just didn't like and right. you know i felt like that you was, weren't appreciated yeah which was surprising you know because of the whole year and the way they did treat me though was out of this world you know the way they treated me the way they treated my girlfriend for each game and training and all this other stuff behind the scenes like it was like to be fair like why would i want to leave that right you know what i mean they made me feel like a superstar they made me feel like the man and i was like dude i'm for sure staying here next season you know what i mean until the negotiation came and it was like a little bit like Mm. They're they kind of turn yeah, their yeah, back yeah. on you, you know. Yeah, well, no, I'm mean, not really. Nah, dude, yeah. It's business. Dude. Yeah, it is. That's the thing. It's before, like, yeah, before it's anything else, it's business. Yeah, so. that's the thing that's tough yeah, about it. It's you right. If, you, if you're doing a business right. and, and you're trying to work something out with mm-hmm. with somebody, you want them to have your full, their full attention. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure that everything's going down smoothly. So yeah. if you're having issues with just that, then you know, and then there's somebody else, you know, locomotives that are on their shit, mm-hmm. you know, right. you know, being straightforward. And then you don't know, like, I mean. 
you might know more than us, mm. but uh, like for every team, like they have they're in different financial situations yes, exactly. at certain times. Like they might have more money on mm. the books that they need that they can't spend to fucking yeah. bring someone new in or give this guy a new contract mm. because their money's tied up in these players. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It's all about timing. <laughs> it's a business. Uh, they have you know only so much money they can spend, yeah. and they have to stick to it. Like uh, it's not that they turn their back per yeah. se. Um, yeah, you know, but uh, what I'm saying is yeah. business. Deals go sour, you know, and well, you yeah. obviously have to feel yeah, some yeah, yeah. type of way because it went sour, you know. Especially because you said you wanted to, you wanted to stay there, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, things didn't pan out. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, yeah. and it's not even going sour. It's just like we couldn't come to an agreement. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I just think that's that's what it was. Like my demands, right? They weren't prepared for it, or and didn't really have the didn't want to meet solution them. for it because Could of it. just what they're, I guess, accustomed to. You know right. what I mean? They had a plan and a vision already from the beginning of how. They wanted to run their organization, and now it's like, okay, with a successful year, now I'm coming in with, like, a completely different game. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm asking for, for a little help here and with this and that because of my living situation, yeah, right. my family type of stuff, you know? And it was just like they weren't used to it, I, I would say. you know, Well, I mean, it, <laughs> at the same time, I mean, even it, it doesn't matter what profession you're doing, mm -hmm. whether it's sports or whatever, like, if you're in that that – Precision. You have to think about like what's best for yours, yeah. yourself. That's, right? that's what obviously. It was. And I and I, I I don't know. I like I I think that like I mean, trying to think about like hey, what's gonna work for me and my girl now? Yeah. You know, like if they can't do it, and then the locomotives come into, you know, the mm -hmm. picture, then psh, sign me up, coach. Exactly. You know, and and it's it's not the first. It won't be the last. Yeah. yeah. You know right. What I mean. So. It could happen even after this year. Right, know? right. It I mean, could like, happen with the, with the locos. Yeah, you, you know never I mean? know because that, that's the one thing that, you know, I, I really truly hope to find is that relationship with the club and organization where, like, I'm giving you my own and I would like it in return. Reciprocated. Exactly. So that, <laughs> you know, we could have, like, a you can make my career a blessing. You know what I mean? I hopefully can make the organization and the fan base, you know, grateful and, like, you know. Right. Grow. Yeah, exactly. So, so we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, like, I'm just going to focus on, you know, the now and, and this season and really try to improve myself and improve what I did from last season and hopefully win a, win a championship. Yeah, you know? yeah. There you yeah. Go, make some history. Yeah. Sure. That's, so that's what, what was like, about. uh, what was your first impression of El Paso when you got here? <laughs> uh, looks like Palmdale. <laughs> he's like, hey, this, he's all flying down home? like yeah. Palmdale. Yeah. In my back home now, yeah. what the fuck just happened? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a little, little town. I mean, it's not even that little. Everybody says it's a little, little, little city, right? A little town, but it is pretty big. You know, I'm, it's a little uh, big city. Yo. Yeah, pretty much, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's nice. You know, I don't really go out as much, you know, downtown because of just the area, I guess, where I'm living. It is a little deep to be driving there, like, you know, majority of the days or, you know, during the week. And I'm just so tired from training. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 nice. You know, I, I get along with, you know, a lot of a lot of people. Uh, we've met a lot of people, you know, since being here, which is great. They made it very welcoming you know so we favorite made, favorite spots to hit up like on your day off somewhere where you whether you like to go eat or go hang out on your um, time off so my where new, are we gonna find eric dude my new favorite spot that i need to go more often is uh carlos and mickey's hey, oh, hey, dude, carlos wow. and the margaritas Car i haven't even had a margarita there dude they're huh? huge yeah Texas i've seen them yeah, Texas Texas sized. Sized. yeah i've seen it but the food there like i just fell in love when i went the first time i was like this is really good what'd you get to eat uh, the enchiladas because the, the green ones. I I had oh shoot because the Mexican food variates a lot from yes California to here. Oh, big time! Help him fix the camera, Joe. Um, yeah, dude. No, so big time. Fucking Carlos and Mickey's uh, traditional yeah. spot, um, a well-known El Paso place too. Um, but yeah, it's 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 good, and yeah, I love the fucking green chicken enchiladas. Yeah, I'm gonna be having to go so to fucking Carlos and Mickey's to see if I uh, you see me out there. Yeah. yeah. So I, <laughs> when I first went, I had that, and then. Um, Recently, I just went and I got the red one with the red sauce, but the green one was way better for sure. But, uh, <laughs> That's a. Hey, I was gonna say, man, green or red, and you're you're a green, green. guy. Fuck. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I am now for there, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but growing up back in California, I would always get red. Right, you right, know right. what I mean? So that's why I had to try it and. It didn't hit. It was still good, but it, it just didn't hit. It didn't hit the same. No. So, so what does a, a a day off for Eric look like, man? Oof. 
It depends. Is it, is it is it? Are you mostly the type of person to like just chill at home? I and, would and, love you know? to. Yeah, I am. That's how I usually am. Um, but now with my, with my girl, my girlfriend, she keeps me out, you know, yeah. and about. Which I is love good. Oh, turn that turn that FIFA shit off. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> See, if you're asking for my ideal day, that's it. Right okay. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. the ideal yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. Ideal like, day is train or game right or, right. or are you talk about day off or yeah day, day off, off. Right. Like, day no off. Training, like you're not that. training today the yeah. coach says hey guys uh this wednesday uh-huh. free day like don't worry about reporting don't fucking check out for a day yeah. Yeah. do something else but football all right or so, soccer i mean so yeah. i'm i'm staying home all day man i'm sleeping in w- right when i wake up have a good big breakfast hey. chill for a bit maybe watch a little bit of tv depending on how much i ate because that could be in like in a food coma <laughs> yeah. That you shit know? could go south. Yeah, you could so, be on that couch for four exactly. hours, knock the fuck out. Exactly. He this day on how much you ate. Yeah, I love it. It has to be. It's, it's, all, it's all on the vibe and the yeah. energy, you know? Because if uh, I'm telling you, if I eat too much, then I'm just going to be lazy. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. yeah. And, and But if I don't, then it's like, all right, I can chill for a little bit and then go straight to FIFA. And I could be there for hours until I hear it. The yelling. That's it. Yeah. Right. Hey, we, we, hey, we got to get his gamer tag so we can play him, dog. Uh, what are you, uh, Xbox, PS guy? PS5. Hey. Oh, God, hey man, fuck the game box. The yeah. one thing I don't like about you, bro. Dude, PlayStation <laughs> is where it's at, man. Uh, Xbox, brother. Xbox. No. <laughs> He's like, no. Oh, no. no, man. So, okay. So, other than that, you're playing FIFA. You fucking. Yeah. Wow. That's it, man. FIFA until, until they tell you you can't do it no more. Yeah. And then that's it. it. But, I mean. Honestly, it depends. It does depend. I can play for hours, right? If friends are online, okay. Oh, okay. If okay. It, if it's nobody is online, I'm by myself. I'm lasting an hour. Yeah, right, and then sure. you just get over it. Yeah, home. I get bored real quick. Like it's and it doesn't even have to be like somebody on playing with me, just online that I'm talking to through the mic. Yeah. Or even on Facetime sometimes. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'll just 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 the yeah just the just just to have somebody there yeah that's you know joining you exactly so okay so let's say that <laughs> your friends aren't around and uh-huh. you only play for an hour what are you doing after that well, TV I like watching a lot of movies hey. I would if anything I'm, if I'm leaving the house to really do something I want it's gonna be bowling. It's gonna be. I was gonna say that. Dude, I, I haven't been why. bowling in forever. Dude, dude, oh, dude. I love bowling. I'm so good at bowling, man. Oh shit! Damn. Is that a challenge? <laughs> Is that a challenge? Did he mop our ass with bowling? <laughs> I can tell already. Dude, I'm, uh, I've played for a while. You like now. to shoot pool or no? Uh, I do. Darts. About darts. Oh, darts. darts. My oh, yeah. Yeah. You gotta man. go to darts. Yeah. Go play uh, darts. I'm, I'm trying to look for a sport that I could beat him. Right. Right. I'm the Michael Jordan of darts. Are you? No, you're not. Hey, act like I ain't won some I'll games before. <laughs> I have. That you one know. time at Flips, uh, that was it. No, I won at fucking Union, too. We ain't going to get into that. Dude. Anyways. Uh, yeah, darts. I was introduced to darts, darts really cool, like dude. this year. 301. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, man. I, I love darts. I love it, man. So I, let me just apologize. Uh, Chewy stepped on a fucking skunk. In case yeah, you can't dude, smell, it's a fucking fuck. A skunk just died <laughs> I, in I, here, I, guys. I don't smell nothing. <laughs> <Man. laughs> oh, I smell it all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, you just farted. Yeah. <laughs> well, right, legally, so. I don't smell nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, dude. So, what are your expectations? Uh, obviously, Coach Hutchinson mm. out from the Locos. Um, and this was actually the first coach since Mark Lowry, yeah. which had been the coach since the Locos uh, were founded. And uh, Mr. Hutchinson comes in. Uh, decent year for the Locos standards. I mean, the, they had made the playoffs the, the previous years before. Mm-hmm. Uh, got close to Western Conference uh, a final before. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's the mindset of... Um, the, the new coach was, they had this press conference yesterday, mm-hmm. I believe. It's uh, Coach Brian Clairhout. Is that how you spell his, uh, his pronounce his name? To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I mean, uh, this is brand new uh, right here. Yeah, yeah I mean, exactly. So. I, I honestly call him Coach. Coach. Yeah. Hey, coach. <laughs> coach B. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> yeah, so what is like, uh, what are the expectations this year? Uh, how do you feel about going into this new season? Mm-hmm. And uh, what is it like that you guys are trying to accomplish out there? Yeah, I mean, expectations are, are still being written and being re- honestly you know developed developed yeah trying to you know pickpocket you know because we really haven't started the official preseason right. and really getting to know his his style of play his system and what he really wants um but other than that like you know for the year i think everybody's going to come in with the same kind of mentality hopefully which win is, it all yeah, yeah where, which where was he coaching all. before sweden really yes so That's he's got crazy, a, a different definitely a different type of style of play uh-huh. for sure yeah, so I mean, obviously, yeah, like I what, said, what's your opinion on him coming in? 
Well, I've already spoken to him a little bit. You, we haven't really had like a one on one, really right. like sit down talk type of stuff. Uh, it's just a little bit here. Good morning there, and how are you? Um, yeah, I mean, but I mean, I mean, for him, for the coach, sorry, uh, didn't yeah. mean to cut you no, off. You're but good. He's still getting acclimated too. I yeah. mean, this is a, he's like, a, where a, am I? What right. the fuck <laughs> is this Palmdale? <laughs> I mean, he came from Sweden, bro. <laughs> he comes from Palmdale. Sweden, to El Paso, but he's still trying to get acclimated, yeah. trying to fucking figure out his roster, exactly. see who he has, meet his staff, the mm-hmm. owners, the people that no. are in the charge. The language, of that. it's a culture shock. No, no, but he knows. No, he knows English. No, but I'm talking about like Spanish. Well, I know, but he's going to be speaking. No, he's English talking about the, the city way. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, <laughs> at the same time, the like, players, uh, like the players, the people yeah, he's yeah. going to be interacting with, they speak English. So, um, but it's it's just like he's trying to get his situation um, situated. Mm-hmm. And then at that, like you said, you had to have to sit down with them, but eventually that will happen. Yeah, no, for and sure. And then you'll have a very, um, not a very, a better, mi- uh, better picture of what it is that you guys are trying to accomplish yeah. this year. No, hundred percent. Like I said, like uh, we haven't really talked much. He's been around. I'm just, I think, really just evaluating. You know, the players that right. come in for training, and you know, trying to figure it out. And also, he, yeah, he has a lot of his play right now since he has just joined, and they're for sure trying to, you know, announce him and really get him out there to, to you know, the fans and and uh, and the league, you know, itself. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this year goes. I mean. It's going to be a long, tough preseason for sure. Like, there's no doubt about that. Every yeah. preseason is always tough. Right. And that's where that's where we're really going to figure things out, you know. And then he'll figure his his stuff out while we're figuting ourselves out. Right. You know? And then the team obviously is going to change. I mean, you guys, yeah. you brought in a new goalkeeper. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, Richie Ryan's gone. Mm-hmm. A few other players have moved on. Mm-hmm. But uh, you've retained, uh, retained certain players like Yuma. I think uh, is uh, Fox still – is he still on the squad too? No, Fox, he joined Orange County. Okay, so he yeah. actually oh, went damn. to your home yeah, You're oh, like, sweet, let's yeah, switch yeah. real quick. Yeah. So yeah. It, it all just like uh, the squad is fluid at the moment. Yeah. You know, you got young kids coming in too. Exactly. The locals have their youth academy now, mm-hmm. and they promoted a few players into the senior team. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of hard to call it right now. Yeah, but it I mean, is. Um, Given the track record of the locomotives, I think, you know, we should expect some sort of successful mm-hmm. season. Uh, but, like, uh, what is it, what is, like, a personal goal you yeah. have going What, into what are you looking season? forward to this coming year? Me? I'm looking forward to trying to really, you know, earn my spot and really be that starter for every game. You know, like, I want to play every minute of every game. And also my individual goals, you know, which is really, you know, increasing my 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 stats from last year like i want to score more goals and be more of a threat and you know create still chances like even if they're not goals you know just having that opportunity on shots on goal and stuff and then for sure more assists i had two towards the end of the season but i wish i you know had a little bit more right um but yeah but at the end of the day man i just want to go out there and play strong you know hard and win games you know, I don't. I I've always said I've never cared on who scores or if I score or any of that. I just want to win. You know, because at the end of the day, we win it all. Nobody's really. I mean, for me personally, I'm never gonna look back and be like, oh, how many goals did I score? How many did this guy score? Nah, we won the we won the trophy. Yeah. We're champs. We you did know it together. I mean? yeah. yeah, we did it all together. You know, yeah, respect to that man. Yeah, I, so, I love yeah, that mentality. Dude. One of the things that I've I thought is unique about uh, playing for the locomotives mm. is uh, kind of playing in in, the, in their uh, it's not their stadium they share it with the Chihuahuas yeah. but I think like the way the stadium looks and like the surrounding like environment like I took this guy to his first local game he'd oh, never yeah? been before and it was awesome it's I, awesome it was dude. so good that I stayed there longer than this guy yeah I got really? fucking faded and had to leave <laughs> uh, but anyways uh, f- that's besides the point yeah uh, <laughs> uh, like what like how do you like what's the how do you feel about the atmosphere here in El Paso compared uh, to other places? It's great, man. It's a it's a big Mexican Hispanic town, so that's majority of like the sport there. Right. You know what I mean? That's where you grew up, you know, playing and watching. So I think having that passion behind it has really like you know made the the atmosphere of each game amazing. You know, right. but uh, but yeah, I mean, other than the stadium itself being a baseball stadium and having that little area of the grass, you know, it's it's not a bad, you know, not a bad, you know, stadium for for us to play at. Obviously, everybody's talked about, you know, getting their own stadium right. and, and you know having that. And that's the ultimate goal for sure. And that's yep. gonna that's gonna really like you know change. It's gonna the, elevate exactly. it, dude, yeah, for real. It is. It is gonna change the organization for sure in a better way. And for and even as a fan base, you know. Right. So 
hopefully, hopefully that, that comes, you know, sooner than later. So another question that I'm just curious about, um, mm. when you got to El Paso, did you know how close it was to, to Mexico, to Juarez? Yeah. yeah Have you been to Juarez? Uh, no. No? I'm not planning on it. No? <laughs> He's like, yeah. no, 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 man. No, Chewy's from Juarez. <laughs> so that's yeah. why I'm so sad. Uh, from there. <laughs> yeah. He just came. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't plan on going over there. There's nothing... For you, pretty much. Yeah, there's right. nothing in Juarez that is calling for me or my attention. Um, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling here, focused here, and focused on my my career, my season, and now my new family coming in. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like, there's there's nothing in Juarez right now that is, like, eager for me to go or like, really go explore. Yeah. So, okay, so, yeah, this dude, the food. Yeah, yeah, the, food, honestly, the food would be, but it's, like. I could eat. I, yeah, I'll survive. Can, yeah, I'll survive yeah, yeah, over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like, I'm not like, really like in, in that kind of like mindset of like, oh, I need this real right, Mexican right, right, food. Right, 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 right. Nah, like, I'll, nah, and you fine. get some good ass Mexican food here for sure, dude. Uh, so okay, a uh, cu- couple quick questions yeah. before we start to get to the back end of the podcast here. Right. Uh, favorite fucking soccer team you said was Barcelona. Barcelona. Right? Okay. Barcelona. Baby. How like uh, is there like a certain player that you remember watching like back in the day, Iniesta days, or like? Well, if first started with Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho, yeah, yeah, yeah. sir. That's uh, <laughs> my dad had my dad and my mom bought me my first Barca kit with his, with his number and name in the back. Right. Um, and after after he left, it was. Obviously, Messi, Iniesta, and Xavi. Xavi, yep. yeah, those Xavi and Iniesta are my idols. Man. And those guys, do you kind of like uh, try to like not like I try super hard, like but like play kind of like yeah. in that, their style, right? Yeah. I like felt, that quick pivot, like yeah. you know, ball in, ball out. Exactly. You know like I, I feel like if any between the two that I can try to really say I my game is related to theirs or somewhat is more Xavi, okay, because I'm not that. You know, dribbler kind of right, guy right, still, right, right, right. and still trying to work on. Um, so I would say Xavi more because you know he's more of that like you know workhorse and also very good passer. Right. You don't see him really dribbling as much, you know, as Iniesta. So I would say Xavi, but Iniesta is another you know for sure another idol of mine that I would want to like really copy his game right, right, right. And, you know bring it or to take mind. as much from his game yes. and implement as much of it into yes. yours you yes know I mean? you know because especially the dribbling part you right know, the dribbling part is is what stuff yeah what's tough for yeah. me about it you know being quick with the with the ball okay you know anybody can be fast and quick without the ball but with yeah the, with the ball it's different, different when you have a fucking yes. ball to keep track exactly. of it. yeah and yes. fucking defenders crashing yeah, in on yeah, you exactly fucking, yeah dude that's i want to see chris out there man i want to see chris bro, play some yeah. soccer honestly yeah. like i i don't know he'd I'm be not, the goalie no no dude, no, no, I'll, no, train, no, no i'll train no, no, you bro I'm dude doing, i'm doing, down, bro. I'm, I'm doing private sessions honestly man. like go like dude i've never played soccer like i said but i feel like if you told me what position I need to play, I would know like the role at least. Yeah, like, yeah that's okay, you you're did. fucking center mid. Okay, all what right. position would you think fucking, you would play? I would want to be a fucking water boy. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would want to play like on the wing, honestly. Uh, but you that's need speed the, for that. Yeah, yeah. You Are you right footed? Fast. I am right footed, okay. so I can send in a mean cross from the right side. Nice. You wouldn't, uh, yeah, a mean one, dude. Yeah, a mean, mean one, dude. perfect. Yeah. Uh, nicely, you'd be off sides you know every saying? time. Hey, so, know, so you do that? You you uh you do private I'm, like lessons? I'm going to this okay. this year. This year up, is what I'm good. going to. I've done it. I've done it in the past in, in California. I've done it in in New York, um, but this year I decided to do it here in El Paso. So hopefully, you know, I get dude, some, start some, some camps up, dude. You're gonna get yeah. some people. Yeah. In there. Well, at first I want to start up at least like getting some clients, you know, for individual training right. sessions, and then you know what? <laughs> that would be the best, like I guess, like promo video mm-hmm. to be like, hey man, this is my friend Chris, and then you show him drinking beer like that. And then uh, he's never been on a soccer team before, but let me show you the transformation that yeah. I'm create. And there I am like, bombing down the yeah. fucking yeah. wing. A month yeah. later, a month later, this guy's fucking doing Pinpoint better. Pinpoint cross, you know, like, yeah, hell yeah. Diving, yeah. doing Olympicas and shit. Hey, yo, <laughs> yeah, dude. From the corner, taking a fucking corner kick, scoring it. Yeah, dude. Just drinking ballers. a butt light while he's running. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, dude. That, I mean, that's cool. Uh, yeah, favorite man. soccer player? Is it still uh, Ronaldinho? No, no, no. Favorite soccer player is Messi right now. Messi, yeah, hundred okay. percent. Yeah, I think I, uh, you know, what? like I really like fucking. Um, I remember getting into soccer. Mm. Uh, Arsenal was like the first team I liked. Okay. Robin, Robin Van Persie. Van Persie yes, he sir. was a fucking animal. He bro. was. When I he was, was so watching sick. soccer, it was all about that Ronaldinho guy. Yeah, yeah dude, that's who he was. Six oh four oh six, dude. When he was with with Barcelona. 
Yeah, man. So, but when I hear Arsenal, I don't think of Van Persie. I think Thierry oh, Henry. Yeah, I was gonna man. say everybody Thierry thinks of Thierry Henry. Yeah, they, they're both. They're both yeah, up yeah. there for sure. But, but I, I just remember fucking. I I just remember fucking uh, Robert Van yeah. Persie, bro. That the guy Dutch was man. the shit, dude. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? He was man. He was. He was a baller, dude. And then, like, I remember, like, Philip Lom for Germany, yeah. fucking uh, Michael Ballack, all dude, these yeah, Michael Ballack, you know what I mean? Legend. Like, legends, dude. Yeah. So, and Over then con. I'm so, I'm so glad you met, you mentioned Alexi Sanchez because when he was at Arsenal, dude, I really fucked with him. Oh, yeah. Uh, things time. didn't go right. Him and Arsene, Arsene Banger <laughs> you know? fell out. And then he ended up with, I think, Napoli yeah. or somewhere. And I thought uh, he went to Man U right Yeah, after. he went to well, Man U. Well, he went yeah. to Man U, didn't work out there. Then he went to, like, Where's Napoli Where's he at right now? Somewhere. No, I thought he's in uh, Inter still. Inter. Inter's an Inter, Italian yeah. club, I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude, he was a baller. And I liked him because he was small, mm -hmm. like, statuized. But, dude, he was a fucking dog on the fucking yeah, pitch, yeah, bro. He was. He, he didn't was back down either, dude. Animal, nah. dude. And even even with his with his national team with Chile. Chile. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Who's the other guy from Chile? Vidal, Vidal. right? Arturo, Arturo Vidal. Vidal. Arturo Vidal. Yes, sir. Yeah. He was a Barca guy. He was. Yeah. So they both were. And he yep. went to Bayern too, no? He was For like a, a season. He yeah. was at yeah. Bayern first, and, and then, then he, he went to Barca. Yeah. 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 yeah dude. Yeah. Fucking soccer talk. I can talk soccer with you all day, bro. This guy's lost. He's like. He's like touchdown. He's like. He's like. Chargers. I'm like. You don't have a jersey to wear a soccer jersey. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to fucking transition to the back end of the podcast. We're going to get ready to wrap this shit up. Uh, before we do that, uh, does anybody know what fucking time it is? You have the time, dude? Tell me you got the time, dude? Yeah, it is 8.37. Let me tell you something, Eric. That's that's a time, but it's not the time. Oh, my bad. Because the time is. <laughs> it's time <laughs> for the five random questions here at Conversing with Chris and Me. So the podcast hosted by your boy, Chris Marcus. He's like, all these iPhones in here, none of y'all can fucking I'll... tell the time. He's like, you tell me, watch. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, man. At least now you know. All right. You know what time it is. <laughs> all right. Man. You yeah. know what's going to be funny, dude? It's like, like from now on, like he's going to be like in practice and shit. And then somebody's be like, hey, man, you know what time it is? He's like, it's time. Like, it's time. <laughs> They're gonna be like chill, dude. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, guys. Let's get some music uh, here. I really love this fucking this music right here, yeah. dude. What kind of music do you listen to? This isn't a quest of a random question, but dude, I'm all kind, man. Whatever, like, whatever it is, like, I like. Yeah, I don't listen to her from time to time. Whatever, you know. All right. Oh, I don't know about depend, that. Depending on depending Fuck on the song. Y'all. <laughs> you know, like like uh, I to listen to country. I listen to rap. I listen to pop. Like. R and B, like any anything that really like. What about I bluegrass? bluegrass. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what the fuck bluegrass? is that? That doesn't sound like a song what to me or kind of music. What about like uh, like polka music? You fuck with that? <laughs> polka what music? The fuck is that? All right, so real fast before we get into the questions, yeah. uh, favorite artist out right now? Ooh, Bad Bunny. I would say Bad Bunny because that's the only one I could think of out right now. But fuck with Drake. I fuck with Drake. Fuck hey. with Drake heavy. I fuck with Chris Brown. Chris hey. Brown. Yeah. Hey. Dude, uh, Chris underrated Brown. Uh, thing about Chris Brown is his rapping, bro. Like when that guy yeah. wants to rap, yeah. he can rap his yeah. fucking ass off, bro. Yeah, I he could have a roundhouse kick. Yeah, how do you rate his boxing skills? He can do that too, but uh, <laughs> you know, like yeah. like everybody thinks of Crips rap, R and B, mm -hmm. like fucking singing, like making love to your Dancing. girl, yeah. stealing your chick right from yeah. under Mr. Steal Your shit. Bitch. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, when he raps, like that guy is he's uh, he's yeah. on another level. Chris is like, yeah. yo, take my girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dude, yeah. Have, you take can have her, bro. He's like, hit me, hit me, hit me. Yeah, dude, fucking. Yeah. So you said you like country. Country too, who yeah. do you fuck with the country? Uh, I love Morgan Wallen, bro. Yeah, he's I love him beast. too. He's he's really good. I love his music. Uh I went to a Thomas Red concert. Oh shit. Last oh, year. Nice. Thomas Red yeah, is the shit. He's too. fucking yep. amazing, man. Uh I'm introduced to Parker McCollum. Yeah, Parker McCollum. Yeah, that, that, that's that's my my girlfriend's. Another that, guy that I like. That's, um, that's that, that, we're, we're going to see him. Okay. The, hey. the and if, if she likes him, you like him, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it works. It, uh, it is. Another it one. Is. She's uh, always right. That's, yeah, that's yeah, good advice time. right there. Another I know, but it's the worst. <laughs> Another country artist <laughs> that I like. I don't know if you've heard of him, Cole Swindell. Yeah, uh, really fucking talented musician too. So yeah, he um, is. Yeah, I listen to him. But I my, love, I love country. I love exactly. rap. I love all fucking all. Chris, nobody my, fucking asked you. Chris. I know. <laughs> yeah, but, all right, uh, we're my, fucking vibing out. Exactly. We talk about, dude. This happens all the time, dude. We'll ask our guests about yeah. music, and Chris like, well, let me tell you what I like. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. No, I mean my my number one country artist right now is uh, Luke Combs. Yo, hey, yes that's, sir, that's the guy right there. Luke man. Combs is the fucking shit, dude. Yeah, I Luke really Combs do is, like him, bro. He's the guy, man. He is literally the fucking. I like Midland. Is that what you're listening to? 
uh, in the locker room before a game or are you know what are you no, listening I, to in the, in the locker room i don't control the music right you know? somebody else's DJ. yeah somebody else's but on the way there i'll listen to him for yeah. sure he's oh, part yeah. of my he's part of my what do you call it a uh, game ready playlist oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah hell yeah his new song uh, what is it called? Uh, Can you sing it for us? That's a question. <laughs> no, I'll don't have him sing it. I love it. It's copyright. <laughs> That's not copyright. It is copyright. I think it's like the kind Just of. Just change the words a little bit. Um, Let me see. I, I, I really, really like the Spanglish. I, I really like the uh, one uh, one number away or one call away. One song. call away. Yeah, that one's hard. And then the hurricane one. That one's yeah, hard. Hurricane's too. hard. Um, the, yeah. kind of, the kind of love we make. See? Yeah, that's yeah. the kind of love hard. we make. Hey, that song goes Sheesh. Hey, Top of shit, I'm gonna be listening. The kind of love we make. Me say, hey. Hey. hey, there you go. All right, let's get some music. Let's get into these fucking five random questions here. Question number one. What is your favorite candy or dessert? Ooh. Oh, easy. Candy, I do anything sour. Anything oh. sour patch, sour punch. Oh, oh any of them. Sour punch, straws are fire. Yeah, yeah dude, bro. super fire. What are, the, what are the, like the, what are they called? They're, I, they're the sour ones, but I don't know if it's like the Airhead brand. The, the strips, strip. oh, yeah, 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 the strip, right? the strips, the yeah, sour yeah, the strips. They're like red, blue, yeah, and yellow, those, and red or even whatever. just yeah. red by itself. Yeah, you dude. Know what oh, I mean? fire! Like, yeah, yeah, dude. I love sour candy. Big sour candy guy over here. Yeah, uh, I love me a payday too. Paydays are fire. Paydays are my, probably my yeah. favorite. Paydays dude. are so that caramel good, and uh, the peanuts. Favorite, ice, favorite, favorite ice cream? Favorite ice cream? Just vanilla. Oh, dude, cookies. Yeah. That's my cream, man right cookies, there, dude. Cookies, no, no. I like good, pistachio. Uh, Some uh, French uh, vanilla, no, homemade can't. Can't. vanilla, dude. That's, That's all I need. That's all I need. You put yeah. that shit on top of a but brownie. But you can't disrespect the cookies and cream. No, it's I love so it. I love good. it too, but like, <laughs> I'm just vanilla's where it's going. Yeah, it's easier. I love vanilla ice cream. All right, question number two. Let's get some more music here, Misa. What? Okay, so if if you were on death row, and um, let's just let's say you hopefully never get there. Okay. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> what would be your last meal? What is it like? The fucking. Oh. You can have anything you want to. Don't limit yourself. Um, my answer is gonna be stupid. No, um, let's hear uh, it. The first thing that came to mind, I want a big burrito from Chipotle, man. Hey! Oh, hey, I that's what Chipotle, you want, bro. Man. I can eat Chipotle all day. I love day, Chipotle, man. bro. Okay, what Chipotle. kind of shit from Chipotle? What's in your burrito? In my burrito, I'm getting brown rice, black beans, chicken, veggies. I'll get corn, sour cream, cheese, guac. Damn, the works. Damn, dude. Yeah. He's hitting all the fucking spots right yeah. there. Hell yeah. Dude, I love Chipotle, man. man. <laughs> like, the one thing that was, I was looking forward to when I joined MLS I thought I would like be considered like a rookie or homegrown, right? And but they don't do that no more. But back then they would had they had the like homegrown like Chipotle like thing. So those You'd be home, sponsored by them those, or something. Ho- those homegrowns would get a legit like Chipotle card, card just for it up free Fuck. for free Chipotle Damn. for the whole year. Or yeah, so you listen in Chipotle. Hey, my dude, boy here sponsor. is down. Eric likes Chipotle. I mm-hmm. eat Chipotle a lot, man. Yeah, I dude. can promote. Hell yeah, Chipotle's fire, yeah. dude. I like. A, I mean, I could tell if I, if I, if just by looking at him, be like, dude, this guy eats a Chipotle. Have you? I eat have you ever had Chipotle? Burritos. I've had Chipotle. A I like. Times. I fuck with. Chipotle. I, I don't. I, I don't. No. Damn. That's because everything for you has to be super Mexican, Joe. <laughs> spicy. You so, know, spice yeah. in there. He's like, like baby mamas have to be. Super yeah. Mexican. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they have to be okay. Latinas. Yeah. All right. Question number three. Let's get some more music here. Um, you were saying earlier that you're a big movie guy. Yeah, right? I am. Um, what's your uh, Do you watch a lot of TV Do you have a favorite TV show I do time? have a favorite TV show That I can watch 24-7 oh, no oh, what is it Can Friends. we guess Friends oh, 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 Honestly that was my oh, first guess Friends yeah. 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 Friends It's always Friends Friends or The Office Friends oh. Office Breaking Bad Breaking Those are like are, are, are are Usually Seinfeld. what people fucking Dude Seinfeld, Office yeah. I cannot get I, like, I cannot Friends get Friends is boring Yeah you Friends know what? That's what I thought about Friends. Honestly, that's what I thought about Friends until like when I was like twenty. Mm-hmm. I had a um, I, I got in a uh, like I rented out a room, mm-hmm. and it was the first time I ever had like a room where I lived with somebody that I didn't know. It was yeah. through like uh, Craigslist or some shit. Okay. And this guy actually worked for uh, some TV station or something like at nights. He was a the camera guy or whatever. But he's all like, hey, man, I like watching Friends uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> so TV is mine on those days. So if you're down to watch them. And I was like, dude, honestly, I've, I've seen parts, but I've never seen. He's, he's like, like, fuck yeah. your friends. I, no, he's like, shut the fuck up. He's like, guess what we're doing on Wednesday? Friends. We're going to watch this shit. So we, we did it. And I was at first I was like, I don't really know this guy's yeah. a big dude, you know, like kind of weird, yeah. you know. And I was like, fuck it, you know, I'll do it. And then so we did it. And dude, six hours straight, like till like three o'clock in the fucking morning watching fucking friends and the, so I was addictive. like dude I gotta go to bed but if I didn't have to go to bed we keep watching, <laughs> yeah, keep watching the it's show so and he, he looked at me and he's all like hey I made you a believer yes, he's like you're, he's like, you're a friend a now yeah. best part of friends Bro. Jennifer Aniston 
Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%, man. 100%. Absolutely. 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 Goddess. Goddess. Oh my Goddess God. dear. Dude. You know, a lot of you, it takes a lot to get to Goddess tier. Dude. That's all I, I gotta know, say. I don't know. I'm done with Phoebe too, though. <laughs> yeah, Phoebe, 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 all of them. Phoebe, all of them. Phoebe, 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 Phoebe. Cox. It's not. It's not even. That's not even her name, though. Her name yeah. is. Uh, I don't care what her name is, dude. What no. You, no, her name. Her name. She changed it. She changed it to fuck. Princess. Oh, oh that's right. Fuck. What was Courtney that? Cox can get it. Corny Cox, Corny Cox yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, like I said, Jennifer Aniston. Aniston yeah, right. it's time. Question number four. If you had to play another sport besides soccer, which one are you playing? Uh, that's easy, but I don't know how much success I would get from it, but basketball. Basketball? Yeah. Okay, hell yeah. You got yeah. a favorite basketball player of all time? All time? Kobe Bryant. Kobe. Hey, 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 hey okay. being from R-I-P. Cali. Yeah, yes, dude, sir. It's hard Lakers all day. Yes, sir. I, I uh, fucking basketball. I really like basketball. I really like football. Mm. Um, but I think yeah, because you fucking run so much, basketball mm. would be fucking yeah. right up your alley and yeah, shit. Man. You got I a was, jump shot though. You got I got a jump shot. Yeah. I got handles. I'm, I'm shit. Shit. Now we gotta go play ball too. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go home. Home. play shit. guards, basketball. Yeah, said, I got some you, handles. My guy, I do, man. That was the sport for me for school. Like that was right. all anybody played so i was there right and you know i grew up just playing basketball 24 7 at school or with friends outside of soccer you know so i picked it up pretty quick steph curry with the shot boy yeah. hey <laughs> fucking all right Drake fucking here. last question here question number five let's get it would you rather bike 50 miles or swim three miles i'm biking bro You're biking yeah. dude swimming is hard swimming bro. super hard imagine swimming three miles bro <laughs> Dude, I, I can't even, even swim to. across a pool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, three uh, miles underneath, underneath the water. Underneath the sure. water, yeah, like even over the sure. water. That shit is crazy, dude. Yeah, so you would say bike. Yeah, right? I'm biking. Okay. For it's sure. like I'm a land guy. Don't yeah. like to get in the water. You know, much. I was just thinking. I just said that, dude, and I was a lifeguard. Yeah, he's a shitty ass lifeguard. Nobody drowns today if he's a lifeguard because they're probably not getting saved. <laughs> Whatever. Shout out to uh, Win and Wild. Dude. Shout out. To you were you were there? Yeah, they hired me. <laughs> me and Junior. Oh, that's right. They, they hire anyone man. there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. I only saved one guy's life, and he almost killed me. Actually, he almost. Oh. Me. He was like six four, like some dude. Oh. He's like, I was trying to die. Yeah, he <laughs> he jumped in. Uh, it was that fucking the treehouse one. It was a brand new that alien ride like you yeah. go around and it just shoots you down into his like 10 foot fucking little pool yeah and he jumped fucking whoop. i guess he didn't know how deep it was like at the dawn so he fucking shit up and it's like there, like this guy's not coming up you know and yeah. then like somebody's like you don't know how to swim you know and i was like so first thing you gotta do is blow, blow the, the fucking whistle, whistle. Yeah. <laughs> so i blew the whistle and then i prayed to god and then i jumped in mm-hmm. with, your then, little, with your little with your little your little red thing yeah yeah so i jumped in and i remember watch. like i remember feeling this guy's shoulder so i grabbed his arm and then right when i touched him he grabbed my legs and he started pulling yeah. me down Big you know time. yep and then after that i was like dude fuck being a lifeguard dude yeah, yeah fuck like, that for dude. real for real people he didn't even so say much. thanks dude <laughs> all he said is like what took you so long i was like I had to blow a fucking whistle, bro. What are you talking about? I was making sure you, yeah. you were just like, you, know? you were messing around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Those are our five random questions with our boy, Mr. Eric Alvillo, member of your sure. El Paso locomotives. Uh, thank you again for being here, man. We really do appreciate it. We're going to get ready to wrap up the pod. We're going to go around the studio here, give our final thoughts today. Uh, let's start with you, Joe. Oh, uh, Eric, thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule. And you're probably training hard for yeah. the new season. Um, it's dope that you're coming to the locomotives. Uh, we're definitely gonna go catch you on some games. But I've never been to a locomotive game yet. What? So I you guys, I sucker! I haven't. So this That's year crazy. I'm gonna make it that you know all of us go do a blog yeah. and uh, hopefully we catch you out there. Hopefully we can witness you scoring a goal. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also want to say uh, congrats on the baby and thank you, uh, thank you. appreciate and that. And best w- best wishes on that journey as well, man. Thank you, I appreciate that. It's the final thoughts today, brother. Yeah, thanks again, man. Thanks again for showing up today. Um, I, I love your mentality. I love, I love where you come from, what, what, you know, the, mm. the plans that you have for your life. Um, I think everybody should be thinking like this on mm. on any uh, thing that they're doing on whatever profession <laughs> they're, they're going for. So thanks again, Matt. Thanks again for showing up. Uh, good luck on this next season. Uh, I got to say, you are... Uh, as of right now, now that uh, um, Richie Ryan is gone, you're gonna, you're my favorite player for Thank uh, you, locomotives. Man. So I'm gonna be out there cheering for you, dude. Um, if you see me out there without a shirt and your number on my chest, dude, hey, I want you to come up to me. I and will slap my titties around and be like, hey, <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do it, man. He's gonna what be with you. Uh, <laughs> you like, I got you, I'll man. Slap the <laughs> shit out there, titties, baby. <laughs> thanks you, again, man. Thank no, you, thank course, you, Chris. Thank you. Good shit, man. Um, yes, everybody listening, guys, support, support, support. 
locomotives man they're here they're playing for us they're playing for our city also guys thank you so much for watching listening you guys make sure to stay safe and stay fresh yes, so eric final words today baby final no. thoughts uh no nah, man just thank you guys for giving me this opportunity i appreciate this like again this is my first podcast you know live in person and it's been a blast you know no matter i don't even know what time it is how long we've been doing it but it's been it's been obviously a, a, a blessing. He don't even give a fuck about time, guys. No, bro, not at all, man. It's three o'clock in the morning, yeah. dude. So you know. Yeah, but I'll stay, I'll stay up as long as I need to to go finish my chores. So you do know what time it is. No, but I'm saying it's like. Time. It's oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> he fed it to you, bro. Yeah. He fucking fed it to you. Oh, I, it doesn't click yeah, in my yeah, head. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah, eventually. But yeah, dude. Uh, fucking uh, final thoughts for me today. Uh, from me, guys, today. Uh, Mr. Eric, thank you one more time uh, for being here today, taking time out of your busy schedule, busy life uh, with everything that you got going on. Mm. Thank you for coming in, chilling in the studio with us, giving us as much time and access to you as possible. Uh, we really, 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 really do appreciate that. Uh, with that being said, dude, you have an open door policy on the podcast whenever you want to come appreciate back. Uh, we really do appreciate you coming here. And uh, good luck, dude. Good thank luck you. on the season. Uh, good luck on everything with your personal life, your, your child, uh, your girl, everything, dude. We wish you the best. We'll be supporting. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely be catching you at a fucking local game. Yes, sir. Like Misa said, guys, if you haven't been to a local game, go to a fucking local <laughs> game. It's easily the best live sports hey, I'm telling you, yeah. you don't have to be a big fan of soccer. Don't have nope. to be the biggest I wasn't, soccer dude, fan. But it's just being around that energy, exactly. watching your team You're going to have a fucking yeah. good time, I'm Jesus. telling you. You will. You will 100%. So, and if you don't like it, I'll pay for your ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so last time, guys, one more round of applause for Mr. Eric. Thank you once again, brother. Thank Best you, wishes. guys. Yes. Thank you for letting me fucking pop your podcast, Cherry. Yes, yes. I hey, always yo. for that. Hey, I take pride in it, brother. Yeah. And thank you uh, for uh, answering uh, when I slid in your DMs, man. It really no, of means course. A lot. Creepy, man, but uh, thank you, brother. Creepy. Thank you for taking that yeah, chance. Yeah, no. It's, I mean, to be fair, I mean, I'm very like into my social media and right. really like, you know, responding back as much as I can. Yeah. And even now, you know, with. You know the private sessions that I'm starting to do. Right, like uh, I'm, I gotta yeah, check. Yeah, you gotta every be day. open to yeah. fucking checking you know, your DMs exactly. and shit. So you know, I'm getting a lot of alerts. Hopefully, and hopefully that you know new chapter in my life can can grow. It's only right. gonna get better for you, brother. Oh, yeah, sure. man. I hope sure. so. I for hope sure. so. We'll see. So yeah, yeah. again, one more, like, one more time. Sheesh. One more time. Sheesh. All right, guys, episode 165, Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Shout out to our sponsor, Chewy from Next Gen Sports, uh, Omar at uh, fucking Sun City Vibes, and Aaron at I and I Glass. So I'll make sure you all show them some love. Show us some love by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram. And uh, with all that being said, guys, episode 165 with our guy, Mr. Eric Avio. We are... G -G 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 Sheesh. Hey, uh, can, somebody, can somebody play us on Palmdale <laughs> by Afro Man?